downtown, led by their record-setting quarterback, Matt Johnson. They'll square off against the Bulls team that's out for revenge after last year's one-point loss. It's BG and UB, and it's coming up next. This Ole Miss team has come in here with an attitude. Campus of the State University of New York at Buffalo, the max season opener, and it's going to be a good one. The Falcons of Bowling Green are in town to take on the Bulls of UB. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mac Football. I'm Mike Cairns. Glad to be teamed up once again by my defensive partner, Frank Stams. Ben Wagner will join us a little bit later on. These two teams love to throw the football, and they can score points. Look at the conditions today, partner. Windy, rainy, how will that affect the offense? Well, they're going to be challenged today, both these teams wanting to throw the football with the wind. And Joe Namath said it best, nuts said it best, nothing affects the passing game more than the wind. And of course, you had a little rain and moisture on that ball. It's going to take a lot of concentration for them to execute in the passing game. So this wind is certainly going to be a factor today. All right, let's take a look at our star watch beginning with the visitors, the Falcons of Bowling Green, and their outstanding quarterback, Matt Johnson, who has put himself on the national map with the way he started this year. Well, the coaches say he has it. He has the it factor, and he's completing the ball at a high percentage, 70%, over 70%. Last week, he hit eight different receivers. He spreads it around. He's got a great command of, of the of what they're trying to accomplish, and he's just very, very efficient back there. Yeah, you want to see how efficient he is, check out the stat. They talked about Boykin at TCU. He's one of the Heisman hopefuls. Well, you better add Matt Johnson's that list because you look at the stats up against that quarterback, and he's as good as anybody in the country. But the Bulls will certainly have their hands full. They've been one of the best defenses in the MAC for a long time. I know you love talking defense. Let's Let's talk Nick Gilbo. <laughs> well, Nick Gilbo, great story here. A walk on from his freshman year. He's proved himself time and time again. His challenge today is it's not so much going to be of the physical nature, but getting his guys lined up the correct way because BG, man, they play fast. They wouldn't get a number of plays. So he's got to communicate the calls from the sidelines to his front guys, his front four, get lined up. Now, as far as his athletic ability, he's, he's got size. He's 230 pounds and he's got great range. He's a player. He'll He'll be a factor with that defense today. Yeah, and with this wind and this rain, they're going to want to run the football, and they better watch out for Anthony Taylor. He had a huge game against Bowling Green last year, over 200 yards and three touchdowns. Should be a great start to the max season. The Falcons are in town to take on the Bulls. The starting lineup and the opening kick is coming up next. In the hunt for the college football playoff, the food chain has never settled. Everybody is sizing up everybody else. But who has what it takes to make it to the top? The grandest entrance in college football. What a throw by Kaiser. Watch it. Oh, he's fired it in the touchdown. This is a huge opportunity for both teams. An electric atmosphere. The battle of unbeatens. Notre Dame, Clemson. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC and streaming live on Watch ESPN. To have a chance for 28, they've got to win this one. The American League wildcard game. Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. Welcome back to Buffalo, getting ready for BG and UB. Let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, roaming the sidelines on a wet day, Ben Wagner. Hi, Ben. Hi, guys. It's not going to be an easy task today for either of the sidelines. Consistent breezes up to 22 miles an hour, blowing right into the face of the BG sidelines. But the conditions we have are pretty much going to be it the rest of the day. The good news, though, it won't get any colder, although it's going to feel a lot colder. We're at 45 degrees right now, and it should feel about 38 by the time we're done tonight. Now Buffalo won the toss, and they have deferred to the second half, so we'll get to see Matt Johnson and the Falcons offense here this afternoon. Glad you could join us for Mac Football. Mike Karens, Frank Stams, Ben Wagner from UB Stadium. 
on a cold, rainy fall day here <laughs> in Buffalo. I see you got the spot behind the window. He's no dummy. <laughs> it's the only thing I've done right today. <laughs> I, I had to extend my cord so I could get back from the window. I mean, the rain's coming in sideways here. Can't you tell which one of us was the professional football player and played outdoors? Could you tell? <laughs> this is going to be a great match. I'm looking forward oh, to this one. Oh, hey, impressive. Now the Bulls, I'll tell you, they're making a statement saying, hey, we're not afraid of that, the big bad wolf there. We're going to give it right to you and make you execute in this weather. Herve Kobe and Scott Miller are back deep for the Falcons. Adam Mitchison will get us going, and we're getting ready for the start of the MAC season, the showdown between two of the MAC, Mac East powers here this afternoon. And that's Tyler Grassman underway, and this one is deep and will be returned. That's Scott Miller. Miller cut down at the 15. Better way to make a statement than that right there. Cutting them down inside. Well, you mentioned it, the 15. Great special teams play. C.J. Stansel, the junior from Chesterfield, Virginia. And here comes Matt Johnson and the Falcons offense. And take a look at the season that he has had. The redshirt senior, hip injury, game one. Missed all of last season. And he is back with a vengeance Love this him. year. I listened to some of his post-game remarks after last week. Humble kid. He's got a great command. And like all quarterbacks, it's, they see, sees the field with great vision. Ryan Burbrink will be his first target of the afternoon. He scoots out across the 20 to the 22. One thing you'll notice about Matt Johnson, he loves to use every one of those guys. Right. If you're out there wearing a receiver's number, you're going to catch the ball. That's right. He used eight of them last week versus the versus Purdue, where they come away with the win. Travis Green, the lone setback. Two wide receiver set. This will be Green. Green straight ahead. Marcus Baker came up to make the stop. Be short of a first down. It's always interesting for me to watch how teams start, especially offensively. What are they trying to accomplish? Are they easing into the game, or, man, are they opening up? Right here, you see a little you see a little bit of an ease, a conservative approach. They throw the ball to the perimeter, which really, to me, is an outside running game. And right there, they run it between the tackles. And I do think the weather here has slowed the game down. The third and two, Derek Lee, the tight end, the offset. It's going to be green. He's got a big hole. First down out across the 30. And scoots down to the 36. Nice block on the left side to free Travis Green. Absolutely. You mentioned a block. Jacob Bennett, the left tackle, does a nice job of running the defensive end up the field. And green on first down out across the 40. That offensive line for BG getting the work done. We talked about how both of these teams are going to want to establish the run because of the weather. Right back to back plays right there in the run game. You see Green. Those are big chunks that he's picking up. One for the first down. Now this is a big win on first down, picking up six. That opens up the playbook a little bit for Matt Johnson. Where Coach Baber says, hey, we've given him to the keys to the car, but he's got to bring it home at night. Nice ball fake by Johnson, and they pick up the first down as he gets it into the hand of Garrett Dieter. Dieter just shy. You know, the 50, they'll mark the ball right on the 50. Was a great ball fake by Johnson. Tremendous play action mesh right there. I really thought Green had the ball, and when I looked back to the field, I saw Dieter had it. No first and 10 for the Falcons. Opening possession here, and they're at midfield. Green alongside Johnson, four wide receiver package for the Falcons. Opening minutes of the MAC football season. Glad you could join us here this afternoon. This is Green. Not much there. Chris Ford, the first one to hit him. Got some help from Max Parisi and Brandon Crawford. The number 58 and 55 were all over Travis Green. You see the junior right there, Crawford, 55 from his defensive end position at 6'2", 285. What I like best there is he stayed on his feet. He's kept his feet alive and ran through the tackle. Johnson going up top on second and nine. He's got Burbrink, and Burbrink inside the 15. Stop, made the catch. 
Great heads up play by Ryan Burbrink. The redshirt senior stopped, tracked the ball down, and picked up a big game. Well, that looks like Julian Edelman out there to me. He runs the streak right there. And Burbrink, you talk about being on the same page with the quarterback, he recognized that ball right out of the release. He knew he had to come back to it and makes the great catch. Green straight ahead. Good pickup on first down. I mean, that was just really impressive by Burbrink. You know, he knew that ball was underthrown, came back, you know, he lost the, the coverage and for a huge play. It's Green again. He'll be shy of the first down. You want to talk about consistency, Matt Johnson coming back and all 14 starters back. All of the starters returned from last year, and that's great. Right. When you start to have that when you're coming back, have great success against the MAC East. They've been undefeated the last two years, and now they're going for their third straight MAC East title. This opening drive is just the, the way Coach Babers has drawn it up. I mean, they've taken it from the 15 now to the five. Push over the left side. And that'll be good for first downs. So It'll be first and goal for the Falcons. Donovan Wilson, the fullback, the redshirt sophomore. And BG moving quickly down the field. We mentioned every starter back on offense for Matt Johnson, and you can see it here. That's Derek Lee in motion. Wilson again. Wilson over the right side, gets in for the touchdown. Now the Falcons are on the board first here this afternoon. No fooling around by the Falcons. Once they got that ball into the red zone off the big play from Johnson to Burbrick, they said, hey, let's just run it between the tackles. There you see for the touchdown, they go to what amounts to a, a stack or a triple I, and they just power it forward, making a statement. So Matt Johnson marches them 85 yards in the opening possession. Extra point from Tyler Tate. And that one is up. And good. 10.36 left to go. Opening quarter. Falcons strike first. They're on top. 7-0. The excitement is building. In the hunt for the college football playoff, the food chain is never settled. Everybody is sizing up everybody else. But who has what it takes to make it to the top? The grandest entrance in college football. What a throw by Kaiser. Watson, boy, he's fired at a knee. Touchdown. This is a huge opportunity for both teams. An electric atmosphere. The battle of unbeatens. Notre Dame, Clemson, tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Showtime! Seahawks at 8.15, Monday on ESPN. Eddie. Where are you with me forever? Yo. What's up, Danny? I'm Scott Van Pelt. Time now for the best available video, which comes to us tonight from College Park. What makes sports so cool are the things that happen like this. To have a chance for 28, they've got to win this one. The American League Wildcard Game, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. And welcome back to UB Stadium. There's a look at head coach Dino Babers in his second year at Bowling Green. Eight and six last year led him to a win in the Raycom Media Bowl. It was the first bowl win for BG since 2004. And they led him into their second straight Mac East title. And they are fun to watch. Oh, yeah. With coach the offense. Babers Woo. coming over from Eastern Illinois. This is just the second stop as a head coach. And there from 2011. 
2012. He takes Eastern Illinois from first to first. Does an outstanding job. He doubles up. He outscores his opponent two to one and receives all these all OVC honors. He knows what he's doing, and I'll tell you what, the players are buying in. They're responding to his his brand of football. Tyler Tate to let it fly for the Falcons, and he sends this one along the ground, and that's going to skitter out of bounds. And the flags come out. It'll be good field position to start for Joe Licata and the Bulls offense. 11 plays, 85 yards. The opening drive for Matt Johnson and the Falcons. Donovan Wilson punches it in, and that's where we stand. Picking team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. You see Coach Rob Ionella in the mix there of the Bulls. He's the assistant head coach. Got to know Rob while he was at the University of Akron. Outstanding recruiter Rob is, along with being a coach as well. There's a look at Joe Licata, one of the captains for the Bulls, and you see he's gotten off to a great start as well. 894 yards, some touchdowns, and he's got some weapons in that wide receiving core. This will be Anthony Taylor to get it started. He's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Taylor had a big game against BG last year, 219 yards and three touchdowns. You see the swarm, and that's going to be the challenge for this offensive line right there. They have size. They're big. I mean, Big Ten big. But BG, they're stiff. I'll tell you, last week against Purdue, as we look at the backs and receivers, at last week against Purdue limits that Purdue offense to less than 100 yards rushing. Loss of a yard on the play, second and 11. This is going to be Taylor testing the left side. Taylor puts his head down and gets across the 45 and picks up the first down. Big, tough run by Anthony Taylor. And you nailed it, Mike, and that's what they have to do. And for so many reasons, one, to keep their offense on the football field, they pick up the first down. But that kind of effort, it becomes contagious, and it, and it permeates through the rest of the team, offensive line quarterbacks, defense, they see that, and man, I'll tell you, that's the kind of effort the coaches point to the next day in films. You look at the starters on defense for Bowling Green, first and 10, and Licata back to pass for the first time, had his hand hit as he delivered the football, some pressure. Again, it's Taylor Royster who's off to a great start. Royster already with a couple of tackles and then the pressure there. <laughs> you see it. You see it. I mean, he's built for power and leverage right there. He gets up up underneath the pass blocker. And what the key there, you see that lower half, the strength. He just powers to the quarterback. You know, being a pass rusher is all about being tenacious, and he's got it. Converted over from the nose tackle position to the end last year. This is Lakata. Lakata short. That's caught. His tight end, Matt Weiser. Weiser, and he connected 10 times. Weiser and Willoughby, 20 completions between those two last uh, week alone. And Weiser gets it going. Got a career 131 yards last week. 6'5", 255, picks up the first down. First down in Bowling Green territory. CBG really is loading the box there, anticipating run. And they get it with Taylor. Taylor straight ahead, slips through the tackle inside the 40. And a five of the play. There's a look at the head coach of the Bulls, Lance Leipold. 109 wins, six losses as the head coach at University of Wisconsin Whitewater six times the NCAA Division III Coach of the Year. And this guy knows the thing about winning championships. He knows the thing, and I don't care if it's Division III, I don't care if it's the NFL, I don't care if it's youth football. Football is football across the board, and he is a winner. They've got a good one here. Yes, they do. They love him here. Danny White did a great job recruiting him to get him here, and they love him here in Buffalo. That's Colin Lisa, and he picks up the first down as he slips the tackle. And he goes out at the 32. So Joe Licata has got the Bulls moving in the right direction here in their opening series. Wow, impressive. Making plays, really coming up with the first downs when they need it. And whether it's third down or second down, they're converting, keeping that offense on the field. You see the bunch at the bottom of your screen. 
Taylor alongside Lakata. Lakata, straight drop over the middle, complete. And then knocked out of Weiser's hands. They're looking for Mason Shrek, excuse me. Well, Lakata reads it right. He gets the he gets the pressure from the middle linebacker, and he says, "Well, where do I want to go with it? Well, let's throw it at where the pressure is coming from." Tries to find Shrek, but there was nice coverage there by the safety creeping down. Second and ten, seven and a half left to go. The fake to Taylor. Now to Marcus McGill. McGill has some running room and spins out of bounds. After another first down at the 20. So Lakata very effective finding his guys. The 6'1 senior picks up a first down for the Bulls. Well, this is a great call by offensive coordinator Andy Koldonecki. He hits the bubble screen, basically gets that ball again. I see that as the outside run, gets it out there. And really, they had they outmanned him. They had two on one uh, with the receiver and a blocker out front. Nice pickup. McGill at the top of your screen, Ronnie Willoughby at the bottom. Taylor, the lone setback, Lakata. He wants Willoughby, and overthrow Willoughby had a step. Incomplete. Boy, Joe Lakata had exactly what he wanted and overthrew his man. He gets a little pressure from Lunsford right there. You see him coming up the middle. That doesn't allow him to set his feet. There's the key, Mike. He can't set his feet, get his feet right, and his quarterback, you throw from the ground up, and that ball's overshot. He was open. Alfonso Mack in coverage for the Falcons. Second and 10 from the 20. 7 nothing Bowling Green. Opening drive for the Bulls. Taylor, left side. Picked up one on the play. Zach Coleman over there defensively for the Falcons. Mike Minns. And some changes for Coach Babers. Third and nine. These two teams in a number of their last meetings have really gone to the wire. Been very, very close games. You mentioned last year's one-point game. That's typical of this meeting. 36-35 win by Bowling Green. They scored with just under a minute left to win the football game. Lakata fires in traffic complete. Boy, he threw that into a bunch of traffic. <laughs> well, you got a big tight end. Yeah. Yeah. And Weiser makes the catch at six foot five. You gotta like him. And look at Weiser. He's just blocking out right there. You know, I mean, we're, uh, he's just keeping the defender on his back and giving a big target for Lakata. And Lakata says, "Hey, listen, I'll take it all day long." So Adam Mitchison will come on. The fourth down, thirty-yard field goal attempt. Tyler Grassman is the holder. So a stop by Bowling Green. Mitchison's kick is up and through. 30-yard field goal for Mitchison. And the Bulls drive stalls. They pick up three. 5.32 left to go. Opening quarter. The max season is underway. 7-3 Falcons. Back to UB Stadium. 30-yard field goal for the Bulls. 7-3. The Falcons on top, getting ready to get the football for the second time here this afternoon. Mike Cairns, Frank Stams, and Ben Wagner from UB Stadium on a wet, rainy, raw fall day. Yeah, yeah The worst is. day of the next right. seven. Welcome to well, Buffalo, right? Yeah, welcome to autumn, <laughs> right. Yeah. I, we can see the golf course in the distance. I'm telling you, there's not a whole lot of play out there. But what a nice answer for the Bulls. The Falcons go up, march down the field 85 yards in about four minutes, and then it's the Bulls' turn. And I'll tell you, they put together some offense of themselves. Look good in the running game, threw the ball well, got it down close to the, uh, the red zone, and, and was able to come away with three points. So that's a nice answer, a bit of a confidence builder, and a momentum as, and momentum as well. Kobe and Miller back deep for Bowling Green. Just a great game day atmosphere. Casey and the Sunshine uh, Band were here today. <laughs> yes, they were. Oh, yeah, we're taking it back huh? to our childhood. Absolutely. which you know, I got a soft spot in the heart for, for Casey. I heard it as I was coming in uh, to the parking lot. And I said, man, do they know how to rock out. 
You, you, you wanted your backstage pass. <laughs> yeah, line. Not at all. Miller fields the kick at the seven. Has the seam, got out across the 20. To the 25. Another stop, Cameron Lewis made the stop for Buffalo. Talk about the Falcons offense, and it is unbelievable. We see first in the FBS in passing, second in first down, sixth in total And I'll offense. tell you, they're not playing the Sisters of the Poor out there. I mean, they beat Maryland. They beat Purdue. They've got a, they had a tough schedule. They played a very tough Memphis. Uh, so and that's a quality non-conference schedule that they opened up with. A averaging over 38 points a game, and I was talking to their SID, and I said, have they ever had a BG team? And Matt Johnson goes down. He is sacked. That's Max Parisi comes up from his nose tackle position. Eight and a half sacks. Make that, excuse me, that's sack number six. Eight and a half tackles for loss. Good season start for Max Parisi. Yeah, great push by that hole deep, that front four there. Parisi leading the way and getting to the quarterback, getting Johnson down for a nice negative play. Good pressure by the Bulls up front. Loss of four on the play. Second and 14 inside five minutes here. Opening quarter of this MAC football season. 7-3 Bowling Green. Second time they've had the football this afternoon. In a big hole, Travis Green. Green is off and running out across the 35. First down at the 37. And here they go. Hurry up. But that was a nice read by Matt Johnson on that last play going with the run. Dieter on the catch, and Dieter close to another first down. Right at the first down marker, and they'll move the chains at the 47. Yeah, Johnson and, Johnson and his guys play so fast, it's going to be hard to keep up with them as far as analyzing this game. But he's got the keys to the Ferrari out there. He's making a ton of the calls. Johnson sacked from the backside. Football is loose. Damone Harris. The sophomore, first year as a starter for Coach Leipold. He comes up from that backside and lays a big hit on yeah, Johnson. He takes a powder from uh, the defensive end coming in. You see it right here. Here comes, I believe it's Johnson, you said. Yeah, bam. Nails him right there. Ball's out. They're lucky to recover it. Travis Green, big hole. Green cuts to the outside. And gets across the 45 into Buffalo territory. Picks up 14 on the play. Third down. It'll be third and one. And Johnson getting that rhythm offense going right now. They are up and moving. It's green again. Got back to the line of scrimmage. You'll see where the mark is going to be. Official coming in from the sideline. And it's first down, Falcons. And the Falcons are coming up with the plays when they need it, especially in the ground game. They're getting good pressure from the front four from Buffalo, sometimes front three. You see Coach Babers right there. He is not happy at all. But he's, his offense, I think, is playing well, and they're executing the run game. Fumbled the snap. That's Ronnie Moore on the jet, and Moore is wrapped up and dropped at that play. Had disaster written all over it from the start. He gets dropped by Nick Gilbo. One of our stars to watch. And we talked about the slippery, the voice ball right there comes into play. Johnson's not able to handle it. And look at, but look at all the black shirts showing tremendous team defensive speed right there. I don't know if that play would have been a success even with a clean shotgun. So after the missed, after they fumbled that away. Then there was some pointing. He's offside. No, he's offside. Full <laughs> start. Offense. Number one. Five yard penalty. Second down. Well, they'll move him back. Roger Lewis, the sophomore, offsides. We'll move him back to the 49. Bring up a second and 16. So what looked like a good rhythm going has stopped. A fumbled, a fumbled snap and then a penalty. It really slowed things down. Yeah, it has. Well, yeah. empty out the backfield now. Johnson. Straight drop. Johnson under pressure. Johnson's going to have to take off. Well, the Bulls have been all over him. That front for Buffalo has been tough. 
Uh, he's going to be disappointed, too, when he sees this tomorrow on films because he has Burbrink wide open. The ball slips out of his hand. There's a fumble right there. He wisely picks it up and tries to advance it. But that was a live ball. He recognized Burbrink. Nobody was with him. He got well behind the defenders. Nobody was within 10 yards of him. Well, we talked about the conditions and the wet football. Both schools are going to have to deal with that here this afternoon. But that brings up a third and 13. Johnson on the fake, hits the out to Lewis. And Lewis knocked out of bounds short of a first down. Lewis with his first catch here this afternoon. And he's been a big target for Matt Johnson. Great chemistry on that route, good timing. Lewis does a nice job of sticking the defender at the top of his, his route and then coming back to the ball. Mounts to about a 15-yard comeback. Well, we've got a fourth and four. For Bowling Green, 58% in fourth down conversions on the year. And that one picked up as he finds Burbrink again. First down, Falcons. That one at the 31. Burbrink is the possession type receiver, and you see it. No better time to get him the football than when, when they need it. He knows exactly where those sticks are. And Johnson wants to giddy up and go, but a timeout called Burn by Buffalo. Snack. Timeout. Buffalo. First team timeout. Coach Leipold sold something he didn't like and called the timeout quickly as Johnson was ready to step on the gas. We've got a timeout on the field. 7-3 first quarter here from Buffalo. Conditions here today. It's cold, rain on and off, but they are here for this Mac East showdown between Bowling Green and their Bulls of Buffalo. 7-3 here in the opening quarter of play as Lance Leipold wanted a timeout. First and 10 for the Falcons at the Bulls 31. Yeah, he just wants to get his, his guys on the same pace. They're playing at a quick pace, probably a little bit quicker than they're used to. So he said, hey, listen, let's let's take a breath. Let, let's talk about what they're trying to accomplish, where they're hurting us. Let's get back out there and play. Well, Bowling Green will come out with a different package as well. They were in a four wide receiver set in the hurry up. Johnson going to take it himself, but he slips. Gilbo's there to cover him up. He got back to the line of scrimmage. And that's the kind of conditions both teams are going to have to deal with. Right. We've already seen the wet football. You're going to have wet turf. It's just the way it is. Get a little slick. This guy's handling the football. Need to keep their feet underneath him. That time the Bulls do a nice job at defending the sprint option. Here comes Johnson again. He picks up the first down flag, Johnson comes in as he gets inside the 20. Flag came in from the backside. The Falcons are not going to like this. Legal block in the back. Offense, number four. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. Garrick Dieter. And that'll move the Falcon offense back. There it is right there. You see v Dieter down at the bottom corner, bottom left corner of your screen early on there. Gets a block in the back. And that's too bad because that was the, uh, of the right, the correct read uh, that came up with a big big play for the Falcons off uh, that Johnson made off the quarterback keep. So second and 20. Moving back to the 33. Green in the backfield, four wide receiver set. Johnson with the quick throw. That is complete. And the Buffalo defense sniffed it out for a loss. Ronnie Moore on the catch. But plenty of bulls defensively when Moore touched the football. Well, there was just great pursuit on that play. And at the point of attack, I believe that was Diamond Williams that was out there uh, just hawking the receiver and, and creating, you know, a, a stall, really, situation where the rest of the defense could show up. That'll do it for the first quarter here in Buffalo. Third and 20 when we come back for the Falcons. They've got an early lead here, 7-3. To Buffalo. There's a look at head coach Lance Leipold. 7-3 as we begin to start the second quarter. Third and 20. The Falcons face. They dominated the first quarter statistically. Doubled the play. 
And almost tripled the total yards. Yeah, and doubled the time of possession. And we talked about how both of these teams were going to want to establish the run. And right now the Falcons just a little bit better rhythm-wise offensively than the Bulls. Yeah, and right there you see, <coughs> excuse me, you see Brian Borland, defensive coordinator for the Bulls. And he recognizes the challenge at hand. And, and you know, the, the thing that they've got to do is, is to keep pace with this Falcon offense. I mean, you don't want to get misaligned. You don't want to be out of position because this is the kind of offense that looks for those mismatches and they'll find the weakness. Johnson going to be sacked by Brandon Crawford. And a big stop for the Bulls. Brings them all the way back to the 45. Another sack for Buffalo. And Johnson goes down. Take another look. Well, on third down, Crawford comes up with a huge play for his defense. I mean, none bigger to the point in the game. They are getting pressure on Johnson. That's been the key to keeping this score down low for, you know, against the team, against an offense that is prolific in their scoring. A high kick by Joe Davidson. And they'll spot it at the 19. And that's where Joe Licata and the Bulls will take over down 7-3. And one thing they'd like to do is get this offense moving. The defense has done a great job. Yeah, they're, they're not going to panic. Coach Babers, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Coach Leipold is not going to panic. He's been in big game situations before. He's got quality assistance. And what he wants to do, he's going to stick with that game plan. And right now, Certainly, he'd love the big play, but I don't know what if, if that's what they're looking for right now. They just want to grind it out, control the ball. First mission here is to get that ball near midfield, get the field position back. Taylor back there with Licata. He's got the football. Looking for some running room. Broke one tackle. Flag in on the back side. He's dragged down, picks up a first down. Out at the 37. But a flag back behind the line of scrimmage. Holding, offense, number 70, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's big John Kling, 6'8", 320-pound senior on that left side. Take a look at the left tackle right there, and John just gets his arm locked up with the defensive end's arm. That draws the flag. Well, Coach Leipold, and I know that Buffalo defense would love to see the offense put a drive together here because the Bulls defense has been out on the field a long time today. Yes, yeah, certainly, and, but right now they're going the wrong way. They've got to stay out of these negative plays. So first and 20 back at the 9. Trying to stretch it out to the far sideline. Devin Campbell, Devin on, the Campbell on the carry for Buffalo. Now, Campbell's trying to get to the perimeter on the jet sweep, but the corners do a nice job. Daryl Hunter, Clint Stevens there, and with the safety coming up, Eiler Hardy as well, and then just stringing that along and giving him no alley to run to. Campbell lost a yard on the play. Second and 21, they're backed up to the eight. That's McGill in motion. That's Jordan Johnson on the carry for Buffalo. And he's back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Not an impressive offensive series uh, to this point. You know, open up on first down and you get the penalty right there. That last play just seemed completely out of sync. I think the ball was snapped, and half the offensive line were still in their stance. Third down, 21. Bulls backed up to their goal line. Jordan Johnson, the tailback for Joe Licata. Three wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Licata fires. Weiser with the catch out across the 25. And that'll bring up fourth down for Buffalo. Weiser coming off a career week last week, 131 yards last week. Career high in catches. In the game as well. 
and found the senior there. And, and, and right there, you see why Weiser had 10 catches last week against Nevada. He found the window for his quarterback and made himself big. And talk about it, you know, that's a simple throw and catch for the quarterback to make. Burbrink calling for a fair catch. And then lets the ball hit. That takes a Buffalo bounce. It'll be touched down inside the 30 at the 28. 11.50 left to go, second quarter. It'll be BG football when we come back, and the Falcons have the lead. Hey, you must be Brad. Try and keep warm on a day like today. Keep moving. Just keep moving. 11.50 left to go, second quarter. Mike Cairns, Frank Stams, and Ben Wagner from UB Stadium in Buffalo as you take a look at the Bulls. Trailing 7-3 at home to the Falcons. It has been all BG here in this first half. And Buffalo just could not get out of the field position they were in, backed up against their own end zone. You know, Matt Johnson and the Falcons will take over at their 28. And they'll open up with four wide receivers here. They'll hand it to Coppett. Top at a short pickup. We look at that Bulls defensive line. It's a young crew. The strength of this defense is the linebackers led by Gilbo. And to this point, they're doing a nice job. Johnson going deep for Lewis. Has him at the 25. Lewis still on his feet inside the 10. Well, Matt Johnson finds his number one target, Roger Lewis. And he comes up with his second catch of the afternoon. It's a big one. 61 yards, 61 yards on the catch by Lewis. Roger Lewis working against Cameron Lewis right there. Roger gets the best. Johnson on the keeper goes in untouched. Touchdown, BG. 10-yard touchdown, Matt Johnson on the keeper. And Bowling Green turns the 61-yard pass play into six. But well, you see, just like that, they take advantage of the big play, come back, get lined up right away. Matt Johnson, they run the quarterback read. He makes the right decision and really sprints in the end zone untouched. Very efficient. Tyler Tate for the extra point. And the Falcons strike quickly. Johnson to Lewis, and then Johnson calls his own number, and just like that, the lead extended, 11.08 left to go, and the Falcons on top. In a from back, you can see that stat with Lance Leipold reaching 100 wins faster than any coach in NCAA history. And that alludes to what Frank talked about earlier. So they didn't even care where you're from, Division right. 3, 1, NFL. Winning's winning wherever you yeah, go. That's right. And there's an old saying. That's right. Football is football. I don't care what level you're at. I mean, it's hard to win in this game. And he's Nobody's done it better than Coach Leipold. Well, the Bulls will get the football back. After a three-play drive, 72 yards and 43 seconds. Matt Johnson to Lewis. The 61-yard pass play set up the 10-yard run by Johnson. And the Bulls looking for some offense here to try and get back into this. And it all starts with, with field position. And again, you see a lot of slipping and sliding. Walking down the return. 13 yards on the return. You will so the Bulls will take over and again. Field position has been a problem for Buffalo. It really has, and, and this is the challenge now. You can't trade touchdowns for field goals, and, and, and we haven't seen. They need to answer here. Uh, and if they're down 14-3, to three, they answered the first touchdown with a field goal. Let's see what they can do here, but at some point in this game, you got to start, start scoring touchdowns. Let's see what Joe Licata can do here for Buffalo. Plenty of time. With 11 minutes left, gets it out to Connor Liza. 
And what's hurt this offense, Joe Licata, is really the inconsistency so far. Is they've been able to move the ball, success. You know, we saw it on the opening drive where they came out and put three points on the board. Since then, I think BG has settled down and, and made the adjustments. But still, you know, they've... Buffalo has got to stay out of the negative plays. I mean, they'll get a first down hold. Uh, they'll get a negative play that puts them in a second and long or a third and forever, and they just can't overcome that, end up punt, putting the ball away. All right, picked up six on that first one, and then he hands it off to Taylor, and Taylor was tripped up at the line of scrimmage. So here's exactly what I was talking about with the handoff to Taylor. I mean, they've got second and four. Now they've got third and six. And really that, that, you know, they'll be, you know, in the past they've been able to hit wiser on some of those short to medium routes. Uh, but uh, the conversion rate has not been great. I think it's only, I think they're only one for four, one for five on third down. He'll go with three wide receivers as the play comes in. Miguel and Lee's up top, Willoughby at the bottom. We'll call it third and five, Lakata. Finds Weiser. Weiser tripped up short and a great open field tackle. And he'll be short of the first down. Austin Valdez, middle linebacker for the Falcons, comes up with a nice tackle. Well, this is what I'm talking about. On third and six, they come up with a play five yards and Weiser comes up short. That's an excellent job of Valdez, who's fourth in the nation in tackling, leads the Mac, uh, making that play in the open field and get Weiser down short of the first down and get your chance for your offense to come back on the field. Burbrink going to call it off, takes a big Buffalo hop. That one's still going. And it'll be touched at the 28 at 47 tackles and seven tackles for loss coming in was Valdez sophomore at six foot 225 so BG will get the football back with the lead just under nine minutes to go here in the second quarter the Buffalo has been fighting the field position battle on offense all day they, long they really have and the, they've been lucky I think with their punt team and their punter, he's done a nice job of creating, getting some of that field position back. Like, for example, there, gets this ball inside the 30-yard line, gives his defense a chance, and makes BG, you know, run, have to attack the entire, most of the field, at least seven, seven yards. Travis Green fought off one tackle, but then was wrapped up and dropped by Ocasio Lozzi. And no hurry up, run that rhythm offense here. Johnson on the straight drop. He's hit as he throws, and then a flag comes in after the play, looking for Roger Lewis along the near sideline. I couldn't tell who got him from the backside. Not sure what this penalty is going to be. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. Grabbing the face mask, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, I noticed Chris Ford was looking back, and that's not Ford. That's number 91. That's da Damone Harris right there grabbing the face mask of Matt Johnson. Again, a costly penalty where they get a play, an incomplete pass, and then they come up with a personal foul advances the ball 15. And that hurt him last week. It, it, you know, when watching the Nevada game, penalties, and that was a close game there. Penalties really hurt him last week as well. Oh, so that'll move the football for BG up to the 48. Johnson, pressure again. Johnson just going to throw it away. Good job defensively by the Bulls. They man up in the secondary, the Bulls do, and really there's no one there for Johnson to throw the ball. Able to contain him a little bit. Johnson wisely throws the ball out of bounds. They'll bring up second and 10. 8.31 left to go here, opening half. 14 3. Falcons as we open the max season here in Buffalo. Johnson going up top. It's complete. Burbrink has it on the far sideline, and he picks up the first down. 18-yard pickup, and they'll move the sticks. 
You see Burbank on the wheel route. Johnson does a nice job of finding him. Again, he's their go-to possession type receiver. It's a nice pickup. Trying to get it out to Dieter, and that was broken up. Boise Ross out there. And that is the one guy you don't want to target. Yeah, Take yeah, another look. You got it at Boise Ross. He leads the na nation in pass breakups. Has one interception. And right there, it gets a tremendous break on that little out route. He's a little upset with himself, pounding the ground. He's thinking maybe he could come away with a second interception. Second and 10 now from the 34. Johnson pump fake. Looking deep. Johnson fires. Has Lewis complete. First down. Marcus Baker in coverage for the Bulls. The first down, Falcons. Marcus Baker has to recognize as the play develops, you get the pass. The, the longer the quarterback holds the ball back there, you've got to clamp down on the receiver and contend for that pass when it's thrown. Lewis squirts through, reaches for the pylon, touchdown! Roger Lewis for the touchdown from 12 yards out. Great effort by Lewis on that. Again, that's just a little flat pattern, flare pass. Lewis gets it. He sees some daylight. He sees a crack. He leaps from about the three-yard line, keeps himself in bounds, stretches that ball over the goal line for the six. Great effort there. Sixth touchdown of the year for the sophomore, who was the first freshman in BG history to surpass 1,000 yards receiving. Had 1,093, 73 catches last year. And the extra point is up and through. 7.54 left to go. Roger Lewis from 12 yards out. And Bowling Green in control, 21-3. The University of... The grandest entrance in college football. What a throw by Kaiser. Watson, boy, he's fired it, isn't he? Touchdown. This is a huge opportunity for both teams. An electric atmosphere. The battle of unbeatens. Notre Dame, Clemson, tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC and streaming live on Watch ESPN. In the hunt for the color. Yeah, the Falcons and the Falcon fans definitely happy with what they've seen from Bowling Green here this afternoon. 21 to 3. Three drives. The longest one was the opening drive. Four minutes and 24 seconds. Then they had a 43 second drive for a touchdown. This last one, six plays, 32 yards, a minute and five seconds. So they are getting it done and getting it done quick. Yeah, they are. And, and a couple of those touchdown were set up by the long pass, one to Burbank and the other one to Lewis, and they he got it inside the 10-yard ten yard line. They capitalized in a hurry uh, off of both, both of those big plays. Tyler Tate will let it fly in the direction of Jordan Johnson. Johnson going to field it at his seven. Johnson finds the seam, gets back to the 20-yard line. And let's send it down to the third member of our team, Ben Wagner. Ben? All right, thanks a lot, guys. What a season it's continued to be. Guys, what a season it's continued to be for Roger Lewis. And really, even though Johnson spreads his passes around with his intended target, Lewis has to be the primary. 19 career games, 19 career games with catches, including the big play that set up the TD. And thank you, Ben. 7.49 left to go here in the first half. 21-3, Bowling Green. In the last two years, the winner of this game has gone on to the MAC Championship. It's been an early meeting the last two years, normally the first couple of games of the MAC season. Makata fires incomplete. incomplete. Alfonso back on the coverage for the Falcons. Best field position to start. <laughs> Buffalo's had the last couple of possessions. <laughs> yeah, that's saying something there. You see, Lakata just sets up for the quick slant. Weak, trying to make something happen, get positive yards on first down. They can't come up with the completion. Now they're set with a second and 10. Trying to get something going here before the half. Down 21 3. Taylor in the backfield. Lakata fires complete. Good catch. That's McGill. McGill out across the 35. He picks up the first down. 
Quick hit to Marcus McGill, 16-yard pickup, and Buffalo moves the chains. And really, this is what they wanted to accomplish on the first down. There, they're able to do it with McGill on the quick slant again, working inside the defender. And anytime you can do that, that makes a nice throw for the quarterback, an easy target. A nice first down pickup for Lakata. See if that can get something started here for Buffalo. Lakata going to just throw this one away. Good coverage in the Bowling Green secondary. We'll bring up second down. Yeah, that was good coverage in the short pass game. That's what Makata wanted to execute. Bulls wanted to execute offensively. He's get that ball out on time. And it wasn't there. And Makata's been told, hey, listen, we can't afford that sack. So he tries to scramble, realizes that that may not work. So he just wisely throws the ball away. I'll bring up a second and 10 from the 36. Bowling Green trying to slow down this little roll as Lakata trying to get something going for Buffalo. This is Taylor. Taylor has a nice hole. Taylor across the 45 and close to a first down. It'll be about a yard short. Good quick hit by Anthony Taylor. And now Buffalo wants to go quick here. A third and one. Some confusion on the line for Bowling Green. They settle things down. The pitch out to Taylor. Taylor's got some runner room. Look out. Oh, he had one man to beat, and he was tripped up on the outside. Otherwise, Taylor was gone. Austin Valdez with what would have been a touchdown saving tackle. <laughs> well, he gets great blocking on the right side by Manasalvas and Blodgett. You take a look at this with the ball snap. Man, and there was nobody deep. They had a ton of guys within five yards of the offensive line. He creates, he gets by that, and it's six points. Yeah, correction, that was Jordan Johnson on that last run. He's the back here. Now he's replaced by Taylor. As Coach Leipold's going back and forth between both of those. Johnson, a junior. Taylor, the senior. Second and 10 now from the 47. Fake to Taylor. Now hand it to Taylor. And they crash down on him hard. Zach Colvin, the first one to get a hold of him. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Changes defensively now for Bowling Green. Bring up third and ten. I, yeah, I haven't seen a body slam like that by Colvin since what? Jimmy Fly Snooker, one of those all, uh, big time wrestlers. I mean, he just flew in there. It just sticks that arm out. Man, he gets the running back down. I think the running back shoulder pads hit before anything else. Looks like they're calling in a play change. You see some of the players checking their wristbands on third and ten from the BG 47. Some extra protection for Lakata. Lakata loading up, and it's complete. Ronnie Willoughby picks up the first down. Willoughby inside the 35 to the 33. So a play change at the line of scrimmage comes through. Good poise by Lakata right there. You see him avoids the rush. All right, just makes that quick little step to his left and delivers the strike to Willoughby. And Taylor off the right side, close to another first down, picks up nine. Hey, now it's getting exciting for the Bulls. I'm happy for them. They're moving the ball. They got it over to the 50. They're threatening to score. Got the rhythm going right now. Going to be Taylor again, trying to stretch it to the outside, picks up the first down. They found a rhythm here with this hurry up, taking a page out of the Falcons' playbook. Not giving the Falcons a chance to substitute either on defense as Lakata keeps spinning the finger. Come on, let's go, let's go. Yeah, put that ball down and get out of the way. Lakata rolls to the backside, fires, and it's incomplete. Too long for Colin Liza. Clint Stevens in coverage for the Falcons. Really a tough throw for a right-hand quarterback. Rolling out to your left, trying to hit that deep route, that flag. Tough connection, and then they had the, the, the elements of today. It's really, really tough. Yeah, yeah those touch passes good. are not what yeah, quarterbacks want to be throwing today. Down, downfield, 35 yards to the back of the end zone. He hits that one. That's the play of the game, no matter what, <laughs> no matter what the score is. That, that would have been a beautiful throw. Taylor, some hard yards there as he gets a couple. 
Gotta keep that pace now. Keep it going. That was working for you. It got you down here now. Continue to play with that sense of urgency. I'll bring up a third and eight inside five minutes here in this first half. And boy, would Buffalo like to find the end zone here before halftime. Yeah, you see the wholesale substitutions by the Falcons right there, bringing in some fresh legs. And part of that was that rhythm, that um-tempo rhythm that Buffalo went with. Taylor going to switch to the right side of Joe Licata. Licata fired. Ball loose out on the ground. And they're calling an incomplete pass. I don't know if they dodge a bullet there or not because Weiser actually came up with, the, well, the ball on the ground. We'll see what it is. Does he make a football move? No, I don't think he does. I think, you know, by the, the, the definition of today's catch, this is a correct call here. He starts to make that football move, but I don't think he completes it. I think that's a good call by the officials. Yeah, you're right. Then Weiser jumped back on it. Right. The ball slipping around yeah. there on the turf. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and eight from the 20. And Dino Babers. No, it'll be Buffalo wants to take a timeout. Coach Leipold wants Second to charge, talk this one over. Second timeout for Buffalo. We'll keep it here with 418 left to go. And again, if you're... If you're Coach Leipold, you're trying to get anything going. If they get this first down, you can get in. NFL Insiders and Sunday NFL Countdown, a new way to get coast-to-coast -coast league coverage on Sunday morning. It's where headlines meet storyline. Leipold was talking about all week in preparation of this game for his offense, trying to keep up with BG, is the fact that the offensive line has to allow them, not only in pass protection, to set up Lakata's throws, but he also is really concerned about the running game. And the guys up front are the ones that are allowing this drive to continue. Thanks, Ben. That's true. They've done a really good job protecting Lakata. Fired toward the end zone. Incomplete. Knocked around. And Clint Stevens was the last one to get a hand on it. And the Falcons survive here as they get the ball back. There's just too many white shirts in coverage right there. You count them three around the ball. Lakata's lucky he didn't come away with a pick right there. You see it throws in the double coverage in the back end. Had a nice job of the backer underneath. Playing that, that was Valdez underneath and creating a hard, hard throw for the quarterback to complete. Boy, they dropped everybody into coverage. Yeah. You can see that. There was not enough room right. for poor Joe Licata. Looking for Colin Lisa on the play. So here's Matt Johnson the other way. That's Roger Lewis. Lewis makes a couple of moves. Uh, Buffalo's got to regroup now because, you know, the Falcons just aren't going to go quietly into the first half, into, that, into the locker room at halftime. They're going to line up and try to score. Johnson, and that's exactly what he's trying to do, loading up, looking for Lewis, who makes the catch inside the 30 and dragged down inside the 20 by Marcus Baker. Wow, great throw by Johnson, finds Lewis. Then another big pickup for the Falcons. This is the second time he's hit Lewis down the right sidelines. The first time was against Cameron Lewis. Here it's against Baker. Lewis just doing a nice job of beating the defender downfield and, and delivering that. Johnson's delivering a strike to him. Pick up a two on first down. Now BG just trying to grind a little clock at the same time. Coming up on three and a half left to go here in the first half. It's Coppett with the football. Broke one tackle, still on his feet, spun down at the 10, shy of a first down. We'll bring up third down. You mentioned it, Mike. Ideally, what they want to do is pick up the first down here and then grind it out with approaching the three minute mark in the second quarter. And that is Coppett again. And he's going to be right at the marker. I think he's going to be a little bit short, and that'll be fourth down. Be fourth and inches as the clock continues to move. See what Coach Babers wants to do here, and he's going to go for it. Why not? He's got the lead. And some of the momentum here. Hundred sixty-six yards for Lewis here this afternoon in the first half. Buffalo with just 93. Gives you an idea what the sophomore has done so far. 
And they're going to call a timeout and talk this one over. 2.25 left to go. Bowling First Green. timeout for Bowling Green. A 30-second timeout. And a 21-3 lead. Well, you, I've worked with you long enough to know there's two things you like to talk about, the little mo and the big mo. <laughs> and we're talking about momentum. So Bowling yeah, Green, if I they mean, can get this one in, or is this little mo? Is this uh, big no, mo this going is, in? This is big mo. You create a 28-3 <laughs> lead. And you, you really you score with, the you know, two minutes to go in, in the half. You, you, you come up with a, a big stop defensively to keep uh, uh, Buffalo from putting any points on the board. This qualifies as Big Mo. You come up with a big play. Uh, you know they're really, you know they're really taking it to the Bills right now in this football game. Roger Lewis with 166 receiving yards. He came in averaging almost 140 yards per game. And he's gone over that in the first half as Johnson has continually found him on some deep balls. It was 54 yards on that last big pass play. They'll jumbo in the backfield. That's Lee in motion. And some movement at the line of scrimmage. Now, BUB going to call timeout. And final timeout. I thought Buffalo. I saw a flag come in on this the back side. 30 second timeout. Now, Buffalo wants to talk this one over on fourth and one. With 2.22 left to go. So a little gamesmanship, a little chess yeah. matching going on in here. <laughs> Let's see Lance Leipold. Want to get a look at that offensive formation, see what Coach Baber, Babers was going to do. He got the look, and then he called the timeout. So he's going to try to set his defensive with defense accordingly. Yeah, Coach Babers went big jumbo, brought in tight ends. He wasn't messing around. Yeah. I think the guy to watch in this play on fourth and one is Matt Johnson because he's been so good with the ball fakes. And they're close. They're less than a half, half yard from the first down. You want to tell your defense, you better watch that ball fake because he's been pretty good. He's got one touchdown on the ground already. Well, the, the good news for the Falcons is they got a heck of a cushion on the scoreboard, so uh, the pressure really isn't on. They can open it up here, as you see in this empty set formation, that uh, they may even attack the end zone here. Yeah, how about from a jumbo backfield now to emptying it out? And he threw it behind. Burbrink broken up Chris Ford in coverage for Buffalo oh, wow so after the timeout a little mix up the Bowling Green see right there I believe that's Crawford getting in delivering a heck of a blow on Johnson creating that pressure making him release the ball to Burbrink quicker than he wanted to So the Buffalo defense comes up with a big stop right there, and they needed it. You know, I think they're looking at the Bulls' de defense. I think there have been some bright spots in this first half with Crawford. I'm talking about the front four, Crawford, Ford, Parisi, Harris. They've got Johnson on the ground more than once. No, Licata looking to throw here on first down. Swings it out to Taylor. Taylor's got some blockers out in front of him. And Taylor moves his way across the 20 and picks up the first down. Good play call and a good pickup by Buffalo. Taking advantage of what the defense is going to give you. Playing a little bit soft now, you know, with two minutes to go uh, in the first half. They catch him with that little underneath pattern. Get some nice blocking out in front. Lee's a wide open and picks up another first down. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Bulls. Good throw by Licata found Lisa in the seam, and they'll move the chains out to the 38. So back-to-back -back first down for Buffalo here. Inside two minutes. Johnson in the backfield. Licata swings it out to Weiser. Weiser breaks one tackle and then gets out of bounds at the 46. Nice job of Licata keeping his composure off the double catch. Off the shotgun snap. And each one of these last three completions, the ball has been thrown on time. Taking a look at the play from the sideline. Second and two from the 46. 152 left to go here in the first half. Johnson. Johnson puts the head down, and he picks up a first down at the 49. You're exactly right, Mike. That's exactly what that play was designed to do, was pick up the first down. Nothing more, nothing less. They'll keep Johnson in there, 145 and counting. Lakata to the far sideline, and did he get in? No, incomplete. 
Ronnie Willoughby made the catch, but couldn't get a foot in. Willoughby right there, you know, nice pattern coming back to, you know, turning his shoulders, great body control right there, coming back to the football, just ran out of real estate. Some changes defensively for Bowling Green. Second and 10 from the 49. 137 left to go. 21-3 Falcons here in the first half. Anthony Taylor back in there with Lakata. Fires Weiser complete. Weiser still on his feet, picks up the first down. Well, he is a tough tackle at six foot five. He's made guys miss. He's broken tackles <laughs> all and, first down. And he's become the favorite receiver against pressure. That time they bring six, and Lakata wisely throws it where the pressure comes from, and his man Weiser. He had Lisa open for a minute. And incomplete will bring up second down. And one of the things, going back to that Wiser play, you can see one of the things he's getting pretty good at doing, he's sitting down, he's finding the little holes, and he's kind of sitting down, and boom, Lakata's finding him. And he's staying on his feet right there. They had it defended well. Poor tackling, you could say, by the Falcons. Uh, if, he gets his, if he gets him down, he gets him down short of the first down. But Wiser just turns, gets his shoulders upfield, does a nice job of running with the ball after the catch. We'll go with four wide receivers here. Lakata on the straight drop. Fires complete. There's Weiser again. Weiser carries tacklers inside the 25. Picks up a first down. Weiser sits down in that window, and that's what we were talking about, Mike. In the window, the window is the, the area between the backers. The backers have their drop. They all have a designated area of the field they drop to, and it's up to the receivers to find that window. Lakata up top. Did he get it? He did. Marcus McGill with the catch. Touchdown. Uh, flag down. That might be on McGill. He might have pushed. Yeah, I know, and that's why I shouldn't have said anything because <laughs> I don't agree. I said, no, I don't agree with the call. I, 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 I think there's a lot of contact on Pass both sides. Offense, number seven, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. We're going to see a tail end here. It gets a nice setup, nice protection. Is able to step into the throw. And right there, just before that, we're going to get another look at it. Right there, you see a little bit of a push off by McGill, but I didn't think it warranted offensive pass interference. What a great throw by Lakata. It certainly was. Wow. Until they go back to work. That one incomplete. These are running down the seam. Well, 102 left to go. And a flag comes in. Back at the 50. It could be an unsportsmanlike call against Bowling Green. The Bulls players are pointing at the Falcons. Let's see what the call is here. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 25. 15-yard penalty includes automatic first down. That's Ballou, the outside linebacker. Gets called, and they'll move the ball 15 yards. That's a big one, and that's going to help with a minute two left to go. Yeah, it's going to help. <laughs> I think it's a bit of the uh, the officials evening the score a little bit right there. Uh, and you see Coach Babers talking to his players, saying, hey, that's really a costly penalty. We've got them backed up. No, we don't need that. Elijah Ballou gets called. And Anthony Taylor behind Lakata now steps up to the right. Lakata looking for Willoughby. Incomplete. Well, I like it. I, I mean, I, I, I think go right back into the end zone because, you know, I almost want to play the officials a little bit here because, you know, you didn't get the call the first time. Now if you go back into the end zone, I mean, that kind of contact occurs all the time. So, hey, why not take a shot here? on second down. Yeah, Lakata recognized the single coverage at the bottom of the screen. Right. And they were bringing pressure, had man up in the secondary. You're exactly right. And he went for the matchup as well. Willoughby on, on Lewis. There's pressure again. Finds Willoughby again. Willoughby spins around, tackled fast, by Ronnie Moore. And that was the same matchup. He did just what you said, yep. Frank. He went right back to it again. Right, exactly. He's getting he's getting a lot of pressure. The Falcons are bringing their, their blitz package. And he's wrecking, and he's going with the matchups that he likes best. And right now, he likes Willoughby. First down, 40 seconds left to go. Lakata fires to the far corner, incomplete. Clint Stevens was in coverage over there for Bowling Green. 
Falcons with some changes defensively. Shannon Smith comes in. And Zach Colvin will go out. Second and 10 from the 13. 37 seconds left to go. The Bulls trying to get themselves in the end zone right before the half. Three wide receivers will send to the top. Willoughby, Liza, and McGill. That's Jordan Johnson now to the right of Lakata. Fakes to Johnson. Lakata rolling right side, looking in the flat, complete. Willoughby steps out of bounds at the marker. Short pickup, third and 10, 31 seconds left to go. A pickup at two, make it third and eight. The clock stopped. Falcons are doing a nice job of taking away the primary receiver of Lakata, and then he's ended up having to go to the secondary. And it's just the vision, it's just not there for him. He's not seeing it well. Add the pressure into the mix, and you see why they've not been successful the last couple of passes. McGill and Lisa at the bottom of your screen. Lakata looking in the end zone, fires, and it's incomplete. <laughs> Again, good secondary coverage by the Falcons, taking away all the receivers. Really nobody for them to go to. Okada tries to throw that ball away, almost was intercepted. But th this, was a, this was a nice drive. They had the nice stand there defensively. They kept the Falcons out of the end zone. Arden was able to move the ball down the field. Looks like they're going to get a chance at three. Second team timeout, Bowling Green. Bowling Green. This will be a 30-second timeout. Take a 30-second timeout. As Mitchison now looking to add his second field goal here in the afternoon with 27 seconds left to go. And give credit to Bowling Green's defense. It's a good right. stop. And you mentioned that they took away everything in the zone and they made him play underneath ball and it, it paid off. And, and they've done that all in the entire first half. You talk about the red zone defense. They've kept them out of the end zone, only have allowed three points for the Bulls done an outstanding job. Got to be frustrating for Lakata on that offense because they have clicked through the first four weeks of the season. It's a high scoring offense averaging almost 30 points a game and they have been held in check so a great job by Bowling Green's defense. And, and Bowling Green what they've done to their credit they've not given up that big play and with Bowling Green you've seen a number of big plays that have set up scores for them. So Mitchison on for the field goal attempt. Grassman to hold. And he winds that one up and through. So with 22 seconds left to go, some pushing and shoving at the tail end of that one as they separate some players. 21-6. Bowling Green on top. Things getting a little chippy. The Bowling Green will get the football back here in the closing seconds of the first half. Maybe a little surprising when we talk about what we expected coming in. But I think we knew with the weather and some yeah. of the conditions that it changed things a little bit. We'd like nothing more than it'd be a dry racetrack out there and <laughs> let them fly. But that is not the case here today. It, it, no, it hasn't been. Uh, there's been some, been some execution on, on the part of, of both teams. Uh, I think with uh, Bowling Green, you've seen the big play. They've come in. They've accomplished a lot of what they've been doing the first four or five games. Uh, and then with with uh, Buffalo offensively, you know, ball control, grind it out. The, the passing game, the short, the, the medium routes have been there, and they've done a nice job of moving the sticks. But outside of the opening drive by the Bulls, really the run game's been non-existent, and I think that's hurt them. Especially now you get down in the red zone area where we talked about, and not able to have a run game, I think your passing game gets restricted a little bit. It's, it becomes harder and harder to pass the ball. And I think the Falcons are more than happy to give Buffalo everything right. underneath. Well, just, it's, well, it's working for them. can't beat us if you can't get behind well, us. Well, into that, they're giving them the underneath, not giving up the big play. And then when they get in the, end, uh, in the red zone, say, hey, listen, we'll give you the field goal, but we're not going to give you the, the touchdown. Short fielded at the 20. Scott Miller on the return for Bowling Green. And be careful here because the way Johnson's been throwing the ball to Lewis, they, they may lay, load up and think deep. You know, why not? It's been working for him, and I, I can't 
Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they lined up an empty set and, and went through the ball ver vertically downfield. Well, they've got good field position at the 34. 18 seconds left to go. We'll bring out Lewis and Moore and Dieter at the top of your screen. Play action fake. You're going to fire it to the near sideline to Lewis. Lewis pushed out of bounds, but he picked up the first down. So add to his big stat total in the first half. And Roger Lewis, not only did he pick up the first down, but he got out of bounds. 12 seconds left to go. Yeah, gives him at least a couple more plays. There's that little short route. May set up the deep, the hitch and go as well. So you can't, you can't relax if you're in the secondary for the Bulls. They roll out four wide receivers. He's going to fire to Lewis again. Lewis is going to get out of bounds, and he's going to pick up another first down. So two quick throws to Lewis. Six seconds left to go. And that should set up for what should be our final play of the half. And I'm guessing this one is going yeah. <laughs> into the end zone. Yeah, yeah right. It, you know, and that's what they've done with the quick, to, you know, the short uh, couple of passes there. They've got themselves close to the 40-yard line where now Matt Johnson can throw that ball in the end zone. Lewis pushed out. And now should be the final play. Although Bowling Green thinks one second left on the clock. That's what they're telling the officials. They're certainly not saying you're number one. They want, they want yeah. one second left to go. <laughs> and they may get it. They're, they're putting the field goal team out there. Picked up six. Ball's on the 42. And they are going to get it. Yeah, and they've got the wind behind them. Right, it's swirling Timer. a little bit. Please put one second on the game clock. One second, please. Thank you. But I think if looking at the... The American flag over there, I think they're getting the majority of the win at their back. So we'll see what Tyler Tate can do here. Kanapke will hold. If they pull this one off, this is going to be a long field goal, wind at their back. But a couple of quick throws to Lewis. It even gives them a chance to be in this situation. It's a 54-yard field goal attempt. They put three seconds back on the clock. So they were extra I mean, generous. It really is swirling. <laughs> Ever since I said the American flag, I've been watching it, and it's changed, it changed directions three times. Ball on the way, and that's going to be short and left. And that'll end the first half here at UB Stadium. 21-6, Falcons on top, and it has been all Falcons and all Matt Johnson and Roger Lewis has advertised. Those two have teamed up and put up some big numbers here in the first half. And that's exactly right. To me, that's the difference, the big playability by the Falcons. I think, uh, you know, the, the front seven for the, the Bulls haven't played badly, I mean, versus the run. But it's been the big play that's led to those uh, 20, the, the lead that the, uh, the Falcons have, the 21 points. Send it down to Ben Wagner, standing by with Coach. Ben? All right, thanks, guys. Coach, you have to be extremely pleased with the way your defense has shut down UB today. The defense is playing extremely well. I'm really happy with them shutting down the run game. They are getting some passes on us. we got to go and work on that. What was the difference in the run game, and why did UB kind of ditch it so early? I, I think that uh, we had a momentum going a little bit on offense, and they realized they need to slow the game down instead of speeding the game up. Offensively, you're probably not going to take your foot off the gas pedal, are you? We have no brakes in our car. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> no brakes on the car for Coach and VG. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. That is great. And that is typical Dino Babers right there. No brakes in the car, and they operate at full speed. What a first half it has been for Matt Johnson and the Falcons. They're on top of the opening game of the max season, 26-21-6. You're all excited to book that vacation flight. Plenty of seats to choose from, right? But the minute you try to use reward miles from your airline credit card, it's slim pickings. The flight you want, sorry, they ask for a ridiculous number of miles. Time to switch to the Capital One Venture card. With Venture, you'll earn unlimited double miles. And using those miles is easy. Just book any flight you want on any airline, then use your miles to cover the cost. No blackout dates. What's in your wallet? Welcome to the Capital One Halftime Report. 
Welcome to the ESPN3 Halftime Report. I'm Chris Kyle. We're going to take you around the world of college football on the Goal Line Network in a few moments. But first of all, I'll show you some highlights from games earlier today. And we're going to go to Fort Worth. Texas Christian taking on Texas and Texas. Our Capital One Cup impact performance of the day goes to Michigan State's L.J. Scott. Got a stable of backs up there in East Lansing. And today it was Scott's turn. 18 carries, 146 yards, two scores. Sparty outlasted Purdue up in East Lansing. As promised, we're going to return you now to the Goal Line Network, already in progress. And as a reminder, that's of services available through television networks around the country and participating TV providers. You can always get it on that Watch ESPN app live as well. Enjoy. Your way back into the ball. That's a hard, fast rule that Miller breaks there. Huge play because it's now first and 25. Take the touchdown off the board. All day to throw. Still can't find anybody. And now they've got Cardale Jones back at the 34-yard line. Nick Mangieri just would not quit his second sack of the ball game. And watch how much clock goes around. That's a big sack. Cardale Jones should have thrown that away. He's wasting clock here and yardage, obviously. Back to throw again. Pressure throws as he's hit. And a dart to Michael Thomas, who gets out of bounds with 106 on the clock. They well, have to reach the three-yard line for a first down. Yeah, and, and you're in field goal range. So now you're essentially throwing something into the end zone if you're Ohio State. Be shocked if there is not something that down the middle of the field, you've got Marcus Ball in there at tight end. We saw Nick Vanette sneak down the middle earlier. But this is a throw that's you've got to be 10, 15 yards down the field thinking end zone. And if you come up short, you've got the first down. Clock still okay with as many ways as you can stop it. Third and 19, he wasn't ready for the snap. Flags down, ball is loose. Did they blow it dead? We're going to have to sort this one out. It looks like the officials were trying to call timeout. Back to Texas Tech in Baylor. Red Raiders in the red zone. Third and goal. Mahomes, end zone, what a catch! Touchdown, Tony Brown! Oh my God. All right, some more points on the board for Texas Tech. There you see Jack Willoughby. Fourth and 23 for the Buckeyes. Can they make this a one point game? Had been the kickoff specialist there, decided he wanted to try to be a field goal and PAT kicker. Came and beat out Sean Nuremberger, last year's starter. But this would be his career long for the number one team down four on the road to a huge underdog. He's six out of seven so far, including two today. This would pull them within a point. Indiana Dodgers. Wow, Indiana absolutely pumped up. Let's show you now Air Force and Navy. And Keenan Reynolds, only two TDs away from tying Monte Ball's TD record. Can he get in? No, short of the goal line. But his teammate, Demon Brown, pitch out to him. He scores from one yard out. Navy up 21 to nothing after the PAT. That's where we stand at halftime. Another game going on. Force, Seminoles moving the ball. Looks like second and about three. Tackled by Brad Watson. Time he has the football. That, that's a big injury for this football team, especially with Pender out already. That was late in the first quarter. He did not return. There's a big run for Vickers. An explosive play up to the 22-yard line before he's run down by Ryan Janbion. Thirteen yard gain. First down Seminoles who quickly to begin the second half 
are at the 22 of Wake Forest. They've got to get that run game going and then play action off it. Get the ball down the field. Take their shots when they have it. Look for it here. Wilson fakes the handoff to the fullback Stevenson. Makes a throw towards the end zone and just out of reach over the shoulder of the tight end Ryan Izzo who was covered by Zach Dansel but did have a step, step and a half on that defender. And you'll see the play action fake right here trying to influence the safety. It's a tight end. Izzo again running the corner route. He was open a couple plays early on. It was open again. The ball just barely overthrown. Again, missed opportunities by Florida State offensively in the passing game. Give it to Vickers, bouncing to that right. Late flag comes down as Dansel pulls down the ball carrier, Vickers. Looks like it may be a holding call against Florida State. And he didn't come back on. And third and eight third down opportunity. for Marquise Williams the in the Tar Heels. So that tells me a guy They're down by seven. Ryan Switzer, he's going to line up to the wide side in the slot. That's a guy, if, if Georgia Tech brings pressure, he can beat you man to man. He's right here in the slot. Third and eight, Williams to the end zone. Incomplete. Off the hands of Davis. D.J. White in the coverage. So now fourth down and the field goal unit will run out for North Carolina. Nick Weiler having a very good year as the Tar Heels field goal kicker. Seven of eight on attempts including four from beyond 46. To keep the momentum he has to convert here. This from 37. Right between the eyes in North Carolina. Back to Florida State and Wake Forest. Third and long for Everett Golston and the Seminoles offense. Florida State made a first down at the 22, but now a third and 14. And you'll see Everett Golson again take the snap protection holds up look he's gonna, he's got to find the hole down the middle of the of the zone and he does and puts it right on the numbers to Travis Rudolph 18 yard gain it's first and goal Florida State at the all right so Florida State first and goal on your left Baylor they're in the red zone as well timeout by the Red Raiders but in the meantime Florida State gets another one here Pushing Florida to the five-yard line. The silver you see Whitfield Jr. with the reception. Third down so far today. Six of eight. Converted a big one to keep this drive alive. <laughs> Zach Dansel. First touchdown catch for Kermit Whitfield. So Whitfield sets up his own so touchdown there. Back to Baylor. Can Williams they put up more Dez points on right the board? Gowan lined up as a tight end. They're going to run in between both those guys. Jefferson down to the two-yard line. So it'll be third down and goal. And they just added uh, Clemens Valdez to the roster. He's 295 pounds. Well, he was he he had retired. He was he's a senior and he was helping the coaching staff. When they lost Trevon Armstead, they needed another body at tight end, so he came out of the staff room. Here's a bootleg. Russell will take it in for the touchdown. Second rushing touchdown of this game. Fifth touchdown that Russell has accounted for overall today. And he's got to give an assist to the big man. Take a look here. He's going to seal that edge. Probably a good idea to run his direction, but that's an easy touchdown. For Seth Russell. Looked like maybe Russell was doing some talking there too. Back at Deshaun uh, Johnson. And Art Bryles doesn't look. Capital One Studio update SMU, East Carolina. James Summers finds a hole. Oh, Summers gets into the end zone. SMU up 23 to 14. About under seven minutes ago in the second quarter. Ohio State. They're still down four 
to Indiana. The last time the Hoosiers won was 1988 against Ohio State. Florida State's up 21 to 10 against Wake Forest. Georgia Tech, they're up 21-17, but the Tar Heels, Marquise Williams, with the ball, down four. We'll keep you updated on that game. Here's some games coming up later tonight at 7 o'clock. Old Miss and Florida. Now, Florida, their quarterback, Will Greyer, has an illness, may not start against Old Miss. He's hit with the flu bug. A lot of guys hit with the flu bug. About 21 players affected so far for the Gators. Arkansas and Tennessee over on ESPN2 at 7 o'clock. Mississippi State and Texas A&M also on a slate of games later tonight. Georgia Tech, North Carolina now. Thomas, the pitch to Isaiah Willis. And he is cut down in the backfield for a loss on the play by Jeff Schottmer. It's a loss of four. So second down at 14. That might be the first negative play on first down that we've seen out of this defense. And this is just going to be a good job of getting to the outside and being able to set the edge, something the Carolina defense has not been able to do. Good recognition by Schottmer out of the middle linebacker spot. He's Gene Chizik's coach on the field. Just loves how the senior from Dallas plays. Second and 13, Thomas rolling out. Throws it downfield into double coverage, and it's caught by Ricky June. And he tumbles ahead to the 28-yard line. How he managed to hang on to that football and that coverage is beyond me. It's a heck of a throw to even get this play off. We hope you've enjoyed coverage from ESPN's Goal Line Network. As a reminder, that service will be provided throughout the rest of the college football season. As a reminder, also, you can stream every single game live as well on the Goal Line Network at home or on the go. Simply download the Watch ESPN app or visit watchespn.com. That'll do it for the ESPN3 Halftime Report presented by Capital One. I'm Chris Cotter. Enjoy the second half, everyone. Let's go. Knock them the air. So what's the best tradition in college football? Take a guess. Anybody? Anybody? I'll give you a hint. It's the playoff. It's only the second year. It's shiny and new like a little baby that I invented. Oh, you, you, know? you invented it? Yeah. Yeah, I did. All right. Did you watch last year? Third string QB took home the trophy. Third string, that, that's you guys. You don't know what's going to happen in that playoff. I can't wait. Aren't you supposed to be working or something? Yeah, I am. I am. I am. High school, Dr. Bobby. High school, Dr. Bobby. That look regulation to you. I think it needs more air. Rebels attacking with tempo. There's a brand new era here in Gainesville. This Ole Miss team has come in here with an attitude. Sea of blue and orange. Crucial SEC collision. Ole Miss, Florida. Tonight at 7 on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. NFL Insiders and Sunday NFL Countdown, a new way to get coast-to-coast lead coverage on Sunday morning. It's where headlines meet storylines, updates meet breakdowns, stats meet stash, where reporter meets receiver, uh, scoop meets whoop, whoop, and fantasy moves meet uh, what? Uh, uh. these moves. NFL Insiders and Sunday NFL Countdown. Meet the new NFL Sunday morning starting at 10 a.m. on ESPN. Where are you going to stay with me forever? Yo. What's up, Danny? I'm Scott Van Pelt. Time now for the best available video, which comes to us tonight from College Park. What makes sports so cool are the things that happen like this. The reward for surviving 162 games is the chance to survive one more. The American League Wildcard Game presented by Hancock Tires. Tuesday at 8. The Wildcard Rules on ESPN. Seahawks 
at 8.15, Monday on ESPN. The grandest entrance in college football. What a throw by Kaiser. Watson, boy, oh, he's fired it in the touchdown. This is a huge opportunity for both teams. An electric atmosphere. The battle of unbeatens. Number 10, Clemson. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Football. Buffalo will start at about the 16. That's where they'll mark it, 16 yard line. Well, not great field position, but again, they're trying to get some momentum here to start the third quarter. So just underway here in the third quarter of play. It's the opening weekend for the MAC. Bowling Green. In town to face the Bulls of Buffalo. Glad you could join us here to watch some Mac football along with Frank Stams and Ben Wagner. I'm Mike Karen. See what Joe Licata and the offense can do here in the first series to start the second half. You know, it, you know Frank Licata coming into the game and talked to the coaches was his decision making and you know, that quick passing game, and and that's what he's done well in the first half. Let's hopefully get the run game going here. And he goes underneath right off the bat. And it's complete, and that picked up a first down. They moved the sticks a little bit. Marcus McGill comes up with the catch for the Bulls. And again, we have saw that throughout the first half, just a quick hitter underneath right. routes. And that's his strength, and that they're playing to his strength. This is Taylor, nice cutback move for Taylor, wrapped up high, but a good pickup on first down. Nice, nice pickup. That's just toss right there. Get the blockers out in front of you. First down, a gain of six. You can live with that. Actually, you can enjoy enjoy doing that. Taylor Royster on the tackle for the Falcons. Picked up five on the play. Second and five now from the 33. They'll bunch down at the bottom of your screen with Willoughby, Lisa, and McGill. And they'll hand it back to Taylor. Taylor stays on his feet, pushes the pile. He'll be about a yard short, so he picks up four. Great job by Anthony Taylor. Kept the legs churning and picked up a couple extra yards. So absolutely. So there's passing strength and there's run strength. That time they set the three receivers to the right, but the tight end to the left, and that's where they ran. Boy, they're going to keep beating Taylor, and it's going to pay off. They continue to pound the right side. And a big first down. So Taylor with three runs, and the Bulls moving the football right now. And like you said, they're moving it on the right side, working it. There, a nice inside handoff. Good downhill approach by Taylor. Picks up the first down. Well, Lakata slammed down by Austin Valdez. Picked up a yard. I kept waiting for Lakata to slide. And <laughs> he said, I'm not sliding today. <laughs> He's a competitor. You talked about that offensive line at of Buffalo. It is huge. Over Big. 300 pounds. There's not anybody that's under 300 pounds on that line of scrimmage. 320, 310, 308, 310, 315 across the board, especially the right side where they've been pounded the right. ball. Manasalvis and Blodgett are 310 and 315. 6'5", yeah. 315, 6'4", 310. Those that's are a, some big guys. That's a lot of groceries. <laughs> this is Taylor again. And Royster. Slows him down, but not before he's about a yard shy of the first down. So again, another manageable down, third and one. They want to go quick here. Right, we didn't see a ton of that in the first half. In fact, we hardly saw any of that, what they're doing now in the ground game. This is Jordan Johnson on the toss right. Johnson picks up the first down. And you know what this does, too? It gets your quarterback into a nice rhythm. Get your whole offense right. into a nice rhythm. They know what to expect yeah. coming out. Yeah, and those Falcons, they start creeping now. Those safeties start creeping up a little bit. Linebackers get a little tight. Look at the linebackers. They're almost three, just three yards off the ball. Johnson on the carry. Johnson carrying people with him. on another nice pickup on first down. So, Mike, you know this, and a lot of our viewers, they know this as well. But for those that don't, this sets up the play action. When you could pound it, pound it, and on first down, you pick up five yards. Bam, you fake the handoff. You get that safety creeping. Next thing you know, you get wiser behind them, or you get one of your receivers back there in a quick six. We can already see the adjustments that Coach Leipold wanted to make at halftime. You can see there's a tempo adjustment. They definitely wanted to pound the football with Johnson and Taylor, and looks like they're sticking to those short routes underneath. But as they get closer to the red zone, that's where I'm interested to see what kind of changes they made. This is Johnson again. Short pickup for Johnson. They stop him 
at the 36. We'll call it no gain. So that'll bring up third and five. Still a manageable third down here. Yeah, so I'm, Buffalo. I'm watching that Falcon defense. And here see, we see the change right here, bringing in new, three new defensive linemen, creating some fresh legs, up. only two. But I'm watching that safety, Denard Turner, number 18. All right, watching him for him to creep up. But he's being very disciplined back there, staying between 12 and 15. Well, Shannon Smith just barely got off the field, but Lakata stopped because there was a play call change. Had he snapped the football, they had 12 men on the field. They would have picked up the first down just like that. Lakata going to roll to his left side, fires. That's complete. Marcus McGill, and that's a first down at the 28. This time they catch him in man, and McGill working against Turner. Does a nice job. That's man-to-man -man coverage right there. And McGill does an excellent job of coming back to the football. I'm sorry, that's against Clint Stevens, the quarterback. The quarterback. Lakata fires it again. That's going to be McGill again. All positive gains on first down. You can already see that they're trying to win first down, and they've had nothing but positive pickup on first yeah, down. Yeah, being more consistent. Coaches will call that. We need to be more consistent offensively. That's Taylor again. Taylor over the left side. He picks up two on the place. So that'll bring up a third and four. Third and four. As they continue to stay with that up-tempo. But this has been the area where BG has started to bite down, which has been in that red zone. They're just outside of here at the 22. Play change coming in from the sideline as Lakata looks down at his wristband. Weiser will move over to the right side into the slot. Four wide receivers for the Bulls. Lakata on the straight drop, looking end zone. Lakata fires and it's picked off. He wanted Colin Liza. No, Sanford comes up with the pick. James Sanford comes up with the interception for Bowling Green. And again, the red zone has been an issue. It has been right. owned by Bowling Green. And they come up and win this one again. 9.39 left to go. A turnover for the Bulls. It's Falcons football when we come back. The excitement is... Welcome back. There's James Sanford who came up with the interception, the 6'1", 196-pound redshirt junior. And that was just a bad throw by Lakata. And we talked about it in the break, Frank. He, the read that he made was not the right one. He threw it in to the guy who had the most coverage on him. And that, again, it's another red zone win for the defense. It, yeah, it looked like he forced it a little bit. He had Sanford, the outside linebacker, running with Lisa underneath, and then he had coverage on top. Just a tough pass to complete. Quick throw to Lewis in the near sideline. Short pickup, but Lewis adds to his stat total on the afternoon. That's his 10th catch. That was an outstanding opening drive for the second half for the Bulls, taking it downfield. But you mentioned, as we get closer, we saw this in the first half, as you get closer to the red zone, tough going. Johnson under pressure. Johnson steps back, unloads, and it's broken up. Cameron Lewis on the coverage for the Bulls. He was looking for Garrick Dieter, and a good job by Lewis. Well, you see the strength right there by Johnson, avoiding the rush and then staying on his feet, trying to get the ball to uh, Dieter right there. Lewis is right there on that extended play to break the pass up. Cam Lewis, just a freshman, and a good job there. So that'll bring up third and six. Johnson fires, but that's going to be short of a first down. Looking for Ronnie Moore. Moore made the catch. But Buffalo's going to get the football back. That's at the 29 is where they spot it. It'll be fourth and one. They're looking to the sideline. Matt Johnson and the offense staying in. But here comes <laughs> the kick team. He <laughs> put a little fear over there in the Bulls. And I don't know if it's fear, but maybe they're, they're anxious to get, that, get a chance at fourth down, getting the ball back on a short field. But you see right there the last completion by Johnson. You see why he was 16 for 19 in the first half. His receivers catch, they I mean, they catch a ton of balls. I mean, they make the hard catches. The catch radius on these guys is outstanding. Great kick. Colin Lisa going all the way back to his 15. 
Infielded inside is 15, and he is dropped. Good uh, kick coverage by Bowling Green. No, they're not making it easy for the Bulls. That's outstanding punt right there, and, and even better coverage to, to get the Bulls down inside the 15-yard line. Joe David has Joe Davidson's been solid, averaging over 47 yards a kick, and he just rocketed wow. that one there. That's something that's gonna that's gonna catch the eye of a lot of NFL scouts at almost 50 yards a punt. Becomes a, a weapon of his own as it drives the Bulls all the way back to their 12. They'll bunch him up at the bottom of your screen. Three wide receiver set for Joe Licata. This is Taylor in the backfield. Taylor kind of worked that right side as he spins across the 15 on first down. See the set now going back, the the the, the MO of, of the Bulls coming out as it was starting the, the second half. The offensive pass strength is to the right with the three receivers, and then we run the ball back to the tight end to the short side of the field. They'll keep Taylor in the backfield as he switches to the left side of Lakata. Lakata short drop, and Weiser comes up with the catch. To make that Mason, Mason, Mason Shrek. The Willoughby will go out. Some changes offensively. Weiser will come back in for Shrek. So first down for Buffalo. At their 23. 21 to 6 our score here in the third quarter. Coming up on the seven minute mark left here in the third quarter. Taylor back with Lakata. Taylor leaks out of the backfield. That's who he finds, but he couldn't hold on to the football. Broken up on the play by Brandon Harris. Trying to get the ball to his check down right there. You see Taylor, they take away the deep routes and really Lakata, all he has is the check down. Right there, the backers on top of it to break that pass up. Again, the Falcons are doing a nice job of taking away the deep ball and limiting uh, Lakata to the tight end over the middle, the out routes, and there you see the check down with Taylor. Second and 10 from the 23 for Lakata and the Bulls. Lakata looking over the Bowling Green defense. Hands it off. This is Taylor. Taylor spins across the 25 for a short pickup. That'll bring up third down. Isaiah Lunsford at the bottom of the pile there for Bowling Green. So third and six here from the 27. Changes defensively for the Falcons. Makata trying to catch him on the hard count, and then looks for a play change over on the sideline. You see him look down at his wristband here on third and six. Weiser goes over into the slot on the left side. Lakata under pressure, steps out and then takes off, has the first down at the 35, and spun down at the 38. First down for Lakata and the Bulls. This is cover one now. Everybody has a man except for the free safety Turner. And they take away all his routes and man coverage. So he says, heck, I'll run the ball. And that's the free safety right there, Denard Turner, coming down to make a play on Lakata, but not before he picks up the first down. And that was a very, very important third down convert that they needed to keep that offense on the football field. And Brandon Harris came up with the tackle for the Falcons. So at the 38, first and 10, and we're moving here in the third quarter. Five and a half left to go. Lakata fires wide open is McGill. At the 45, makes a move inside the 40, holds onto the football and wrapped up. But Marcus McGill wide open in the near sideline. Well, that's adds some excitement now to the Bulls offense. Here, a little taste of a big play to McGill. Lakata finds him, a breakdown in coverage, and the Falcons secondary recognizes it. Big pass completion right there, over 20 yards 
to advance that ball over the middle of the field. I couldn't tell who was on the outside, but I think he got caught looking inside before you knew it. The speedy Marcus McGill was behind him. So they'll mark it at the 39 of Bowling Green. Lakata going to load up, fires. He's looking for Willoughby, and that pass is going to be short. Clint Stevens in coverage for Bowling Green. You see right there, the timing's just not there. He throws the ball before Willoughby comes out of his break, but there's really no, no connection there, no chemistry between the two, and the rhythm, the timing is all blown up. That's why that pass is not completed. That one just didn't look like it had a lot of zip on it. I don't know. They are going into the wind going down at yeah. this end. Well, I think it had a little bit of pressure in Lakata in his face, so they didn't allow him to really you know, step into the ball, step into the throw, and deliver it with authority. I'll bring up second and ten now. Taylor, the deep back behind Lakata. Kendall Patterson in motion for Buffalo. This is Taylor. Got a hole on the right side. Look out. Taylor over the right side and close to a first down. He'll be about a half yard short. You saw Taylor starting to shift gears as he got out over the right side behind Manasalvis and Blodgett. Well, watch Manasalvis come in and lead up into the hole. That's beautiful. Now, he doesn't get the kill shot on the, on the defensive back, but he creates a lot of space right there or some running room behind him. They do a nice job. That's their power play down, down, and bring Manasalvo around. And there's Taylor again. Another rip and a big first down pickup to the 20. So the Bulls right back in the red zone for the second straight series. Let's see what they've got here. Well, they love running the ball to that right side. They'll keep the tempo going, too, and then the flag comes in to stop play. With 4.20 left to go, and that'll give BG a chance to make some moves defensively. Full start, offense, number 61. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's Manasalvis. And again, nothing will drive a coach more crazy when everybody knows they're playing <laughs> up-tempo. <laughs> yeah, or your hey, linemen are still moving. Yeah, and you're humming. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're hitting on all cylinders. You're moving the ball, and you come up with a false start. Jordan Johnson, the deep back behind Lakata. Johnson's got the football, trying to get to the edge. Does, still on his feet. Jordan Inside Johnson. the 20. Ben Hale on the tackle. Trenton Green. From his outside linebacker position for Bowling Green on the play. This time they're getting inside the red zone. They said, let's pound the football let's and see what it. happens. Right. Yeah, let's test those big offensive linemen. We've been singing their praises all season. Let's put them to work. Now Johnson will stay behind Lakata. Lakata fires, and that one incomplete. Just a little bit behind Smiley on the hip. Trying to find that window. See the window right there. Nice play by the backer who really gets a nice break on the ball. You see him right there. He shrinks that window for Smiley and Lakata to make the connection. That's, a, you, that, that, that's when you talk about threading a needle right there. So that'll bring up third and seven. Big third down here. For Lakata and the Bulls. It was middle linebacker Nate Lott, number 27, does a nice job breaking on that football, closing that passing lane. Lakata got plenty of time, leaked it out. This is Taylor. Taylor's got some run room, picks up the first down. Good play call there by Buffalo. Backs catching the ball out of the backfield. That really hurts. Linebackers normally responsible for that, but that's an offense saying, hey, listen, we're going to take what the defense gives us. They give us a check down. We'll give it to our back. Let, let's let him run with the football. So first down from the 10. Taylor to the right of Lakata. Looking up top for Willoughby, and it knocked out of his hands defensively by Stevens. That was a nice play by Clint Stevens, a sophomore, one-on-one -on -one with Willoughby. That's a back shoulder throw right there, and Stevens just gets nasty. He means all. He recognizes, you know, Willoughby's eyes had to get so big right there. Stevens recognizes that. He knows the ball is going to be thrown, and you see that right arm, man. It starts, it starts making contact, breaks the pass up. Boy, Ronnie had it in his hands, too. A guy that doesn't drop a lot of passes, I can tell you that. Second and ten. 
Willoughby's at the bottom of your screen. Lakata looked that way and then fires and throws it away. Willoughby was covered by Alfonso Mack. So you're thinking to yourself, why can't they complete the pass in the red zone? Because the Falcons in the secondary are really clamping down the coverage. They're saying, hey, listen, this is my guy. He's in my, whether it's man-to-man, -man, he's in, if, if it's zone and he's in my area, I'm playing it like he's going to get the ball. If it's man-to-man, -man, they're very aggressive. They're very physical. And it's making hard for Lakata to find an open receiver. Well, I got to think they're in four down territory no matter what. Down 21 to 6. It's third and 10. Inside three minutes here in the third quarter. Johnson is the running back. Lakata fires and he's looking for Weiser. Alfonso Mack in coverage for the Falcons. Watch Taylor Royster right there, number 33, and that's why this pass was incomplete. He's got Weiser. He's made that connection all day long, but he sees Royster coming at him. I mean, and he's a load. He knows he's going to take a shot and just not able to set his feet and deliver the, the pass with any accuracy. Well, I thought they might go for it. The Bulls fans want him to go for it, but they'll settle for the field goal here. And that one is up and good. So three field goals is all Buffalo has been able to muster here this afternoon. 2.41 left to go here in the third quarter. 21-9, Bowling Green. And welcome back. 2.41 left to go. 21-9 as the Bulls go 16 plays, which is the most plays they've run in a series here this afternoon. 78 yards, five and a half minutes, and come away with a field goal. Yeah, that's outstanding. I mean, that's they built upon that first series of downs that they had coming out into the second half. There they put together another strong drive. This time they come away with three points, but you can't continue to trade touchdowns for field goals. That's just not going to get it. But it is encouraging that they're executing. And they've got, I mean, the, the, the game time adjustments, the halftime adjustments by Coach Leipold has been fabulous. I mean, this, this, to me, offensively, it's a different team. Executing better, especially in the run game. Miller dropped the football inside his 10. And then tried to stretch it to the outside. Buffalo's there. And a good tackle by the Bulls in some tough field position for Matt Johnson and the Falcons when we come back. 2.36 left to go. There's a flag down on the field. 21-9 Falcons. Seahawks at 8.15, Monday on ESPN. In the hunt for the college football playoff, the food chain is never settled. Everybody is sizing up everybody else. But who has what it takes to make it to the top? The grandest entrance in college football. What a throw by Kaiser! Watson, oh, he's fired it, isn't he? Touchdown! This is a huge opportunity for both teams. An electric atmosphere. The battle of unbeatens. Notre Dame, Clemson, tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Eddie. Where you'll stay with me forever? Go! What's up, Danny? I'm Scott Van Pelt. Time now for the best available video, which comes to us tonight from College Park. What makes sports so cool are the things that happen like this. To have a chance for 28, they've got to win this one. The American League wildcard game, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN.
Well, Lance Leipold, not a happy guy right now after his special team makes a great play to get Bowling Green inside the five. And then an unsportsmanlike conduct on Jordan Collier moves the ball back out after a 15-yard mark off to the 21. So they put Bowling Green in a great situation and then took him right yep. out of it with the penalty. Emotion is a great thing. It's definitely a great thing. It's a huge part of football, but it needs to be channeled the right way. And that there is a perfect example of not being channeled the right way. Cop it. Picked up two. Here as the third quarter starts to wind down. And you can't say enough about what Bowling Green's been able to do defensively. We've talked about how much of an offense this team brings in, one of the best in college football, but it's been the defense today that has really shut down Buffalo and kept him in check. Big plays on the offense and big plays in the red zone by the defense. In the red zone. And, you know, at halftime, Bowling Green had three for four in red zone chances to score. The Bulls had two for three. Now that's changed here in the first couple of possessions of the first of the second half. Now they they lap them. The Bulls go four for five now in red zone chances to score. And and like to your point, the Bowling Green, the Falcons have kept them out of that end zone and they put touchdowns when they've had the chance. Well, that was a good run there by Cop, but otherwise it would have been the second three and out for the Bowling Green yeah. offense. And Buffalo's <laughs> getting that ball right back. It, it, right. And, and you know, it, it's if not for their inability to score touchdowns in the red zone, this would be a different game. Cop it finds a hole. Look out. 50, 40, Cop it. Trying to get to the outside, he does. Big pickup by Coppett. Marcus Baker on the tackle as the junior squirts out for a big play. Coach Baybar recognizes now they're heavy on the perimeter, so let's run Coppett up the middle. That time they gash him for a big play. It'll be Coppett again. Coppett close to another first down. Picks up eight. No back-to-back pickups by the junior. Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. They're, they're going to run it again. Johnson fakes it, fires, and throw him behind Dieter. Dieter in man coverage. Marcus Baker there defending. First-year starter at the corner for Lance Leipold. Take a look at it. Now they had me fooled. They go off the play action. When you're running, running, running so well, it sets up the play action right there. They try to get the ball to Dieter, but the ball's you know, a rare miss by Matt Johnson. He would love to have that one back. Dieter had a step on Baker in the right direction. Third and two. And they'll give it to Coppett. Another big hole up the middle, and Coppett picks up the first down. Well, we talked so much about Buffalo's offensive line. How about the Falcons in this series here? Opening up some holes for Fred Coppett. Yeah, they certainly are. That's just zone blocking up front, creating a great seam for Coppett on the inside zone. He's got, there's no nothing fancy there. He's just running straight ahead. And they continue to give the football to the junior. Picked up two there. Be second and eight at Buffalo's 10. Changes offensively for the Falcons. Little bit of a wrinkle here for the uh, the Falcons in, in their offensive approach. We didn't call cop it a ton in the first half, and here the, the Bulls are getting something that they haven't seen. Johnson on the keeper. They brought Travis Green back, and we haven't seen a lot of Travis Green here in this second half. See Johnson off the quarterback read, fakes it, uses Green as a decoy coming into the game. Eyes are on him, uses his uses him as a decoy, keeps it himself, tries to make something happen up, up into that soft middle that we've seen. And that's the end of the third quarter. And Bowling Green in control here. They'll have a third and five when we come back. The Falcons 21, the Bulls 9. Stadium get ready to start the fourth quarter. Bowling Green faces a third and five from the seven. Mike Aarons, Frank Stams, Ben Wagner from Buffalo as these teams begin the trek through the MAC. And the two time defending MAC East champs in town, the Falcons, to take on the Bulls. It's been the Fred Coppett show on this drive. 75 yards in the drive, 65 of them belong to number 28. He's right back in there on a third and five. Johnson, little pitch end around here. Dieter, he's got room. Look out, gets in for the touchdown. And that's Brandon, or excuse me, Ronnie Moore. 
A little razzle-dazzle for the Falcons, and Moore comes in around the backside and runs in for the touchdown. Seven-yard touchdown run for the junior. A little wrinkle for the offense <laughs> down in the red zone. <laughs> yeah, like the option reverse there, <laughs> and they run it to perfection. Tate for the extra point. And it is good. Well, the opening play here of the fourth quarter, and it's a touchdown for Ronnie Moore as they extend the lead. Bowling Green in control here in Buffalo, 28-9. Four left to go, taking a look at Ronnie Moore, celebrating that seven-yard touchdown run as the Falcons in control here, 28 to nine. They add a little something, something when they get down there in the red zone. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. He's Moore came in on the backside. He's got some moves. <laughs> and found the end zone. And, 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 you know, they give him the ball on the, op I call it the option right, reverse left to Ronnie Moore, executed perfectly off the pitch, gets a nice block by Dieter out in front, but there's the difference. They're scoring touchdowns in the red zones. So the Bulls with a fourth quarter of work here and trying to get something going. Devin Campbell back to receive the kick. That is one. Campbell and the flag comes in off the backside as he gets out across the 20 to the 24. But a block against one of his teammates is going to bring that back. You saw it. I, if, yeah, there's three uh, flags on the field. If I had one, I could. I would have thrown <laughs> it from up here. I mean, it was right in the middle of the field, and that's going to be costly. Again, you talk about Coach Leipold not being happy with the last special team. During the return, sure. illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 22. Half the distance to the goal line, first down. He's really not going to be happy with this one. Take a look at it right here. It's going to come from, there it is, right there, right in the top left of your screen. Plain as day. And that draws a ton of laundry. It's Diamond Williams, the sophomore. The last play for Bowling Green. 10 plays, 79 yards in 2 minutes and 42 seconds. It led to a Ronnie Moore touchdown. So Joe Licata and the Bulls go to work here. Backed up inside their 10. That's Kendall Patterson in motion. This is Jordan Johnson. Johnson over the left side. And he's going to lose a yard. Mike Minns over there on that side, along with Taylor Royster, who's had a great day for Bowling Green. He has been everywhere, number 33. That was just great support on the outside. I think came from Sanford as well. He just flew up in there from his backer position, creates that hard edge for no gain. Lisa in motion. Going to test the right side. Johnson this time puts his head down out across the 15. Tough yards for the junior there. It'll bring up a third down. Yeah, the backers for the Falcons are getting a great run pass key here. I'm watching them, and those backers, at times, you know, in the middle there, they're maybe less than two yards off the ball, anticipating run in a heavy way. That makes all the difference in the world when, when you're a linebacker and you can really anticipate run versus fast. It gives you that a little bit more of an edge. Here, I mean, look, they're, you know, within two, three yards. Yeah, they are stacking the box right now. And Licata gets a big push and picks up the first down. Well, that's so nice to have those big linemen. Yeah. We talked about right. how big that line is. Just pick a guy and follow right. him. Yeah. Now, I know it was third and short there, but still, you know, that's not atypical what they've been doing with the, on the other downs. So out at the 20, a first down. Clock moving here in the fourth quarter. Mercata spins left side, fires to the far sideline, and it comes up with the catch. First down, Buffalo. Out at the 44, nice throw by Licata. An even better catch by Liza. And a flag down on the play. It's a tough Two. throw for Licata. Working to his left, right-handed quarterback. Passer. Defense, number 92, 
15 yard penalty added to the end of the play automatic first down wow that becomes a big big play and that's been a rare penalty on bowling green that's a big one let's see if buffalo can can take it and use it this ball, ball is going to be stepped off all the way to the bg 41. let's see if lakata can use this create a little momentum and get into the end zone for Buffalo. Jordan Johnson is the deep back. That's McGill in motion. Play action. Lakata under pressure and he's sacked back at the 49. Zach Colvin comes up with the sack. Or excuse me, Shannon Smith, the sophomore, the redshirt sophomore comes up with the sack. 6'1", 281 and they get to Lakata. Lakata's had some pretty good pockets to throw. Has not, he's had some pressure, but that's the first time they've broken through and put him to the ground. Well, Smith does an excellent job of collapsing that pocket on Lakata. It was a three-man route in the secondary. They were all deep. Falcons take that away, forces Lakata to hold the ball longer than he wants, and Smith comes up with the sack. Loss of six, and he goes right back to McGill on second and 16. Picks up seven as he gets back to the 40, just past the line of scrimmage. He'll bring up third and nine. The Bulls keep coming at you. I mean, they've been able to move the ball, you know, between the 20s, and their difficulty lies within the red zone. Let's see what they can do here. Third and nine from the 40. Johnson in the backfield along with Lakata. Excuse me, with Lakata. He's got Willoughby and he picks up the first down. Willoughby at the 29, first down Buffalo. Wow, Willoughby does an exceptional job of catching that ball with a defender on his back. And Lakata certainly threw a strike. Well, that'll move the change as they get out to the 29. They want to go up tempo here. Lakata, another quick throw to Willoughby. Willoughby tries to spin out of one tackle and does, and then lunges towards another first down. He's close. Pick up nine on the play. Willoughby that time working against Ben Hill. He gets the best of him. He separates and then able to pick up yardage after the catch. The fake to Taylor, and then he goes up top. And that's going to be close to a first down. That's Martinez. Martinez does a lot of running around for less than a yard. <laughs> Comes up short. They'll bring up a third and one. Taylor in the backfield with Lakata. Lakata looking pass, firing end zone, and he overthrew his guy. Marcus McGill got a hand on it. Good coverage by BG. That's Mack on the coverage there on McGill. Does a nice job of really putting his hip on McGill's hip. Again, you see the arm strength right there by Lakata. Throws a laser to McGill. McGill just a little high. But Mack is right there where he needs to be underneath that coverage. Coach Leipold going for it here on fourth and one. They'll fake it. And Lakata going to run around the left side and pick up the first down. Go Buffalo will move the chains. And the keeper by Lakata. A little bit quarterback run in there. Very effective when everybody's accounted for it. Get your, let your quarterback run with the football. He does a nice job of keeping that around left end. And then protecting himself, getting out of bounds. At the 16 of Bowling Green. Taylor behind Lakata. He's firing to Martinez. And did he get in? Martinez at the goal line. And they're going to say he's just short. Well, they, Martinez on the quick strike. Yeah, they again, inside. When you get inside your defender, that's. 
that's what you want to be in the red zone right there. Martinez does that well. We've seen it a number of times. On the quick slant right there, you got a skinny post. You want to get inside. The run on the previous play was the runner was short of the goal line. The previous play is under for further review. Well, it's under review. You saw the replay we just showed you. Well, I thought live. I thought he was in. But, you know, they've got a better vantage point than I do from up here, from down there. Take a look at the strike right there. Well-thrown ball. It's hard to tell from this spot. It's Clint Stevens on the coverage. Not bad. You see Martinez. He's able to Let's take a look at it right here. Yeah, the knee is down. It's just where is the ball when the knee is down. This will give us a good look right here. Now, after review, it looks like they're going to confirm and say that what Frank said, they're going to be right there. Yeah, they, they, they made a nice call. You see the replay. <laughs> that last Close. shot we had is a good shot. The knees down, ball short. Great job by our guys in the truck. After yeah. further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was short of the goal line. First down. Well, that's that's the bad news. The good news is you got first and goal. You got plenty <laughs> of time to, to get in. So, Lakata will bring the offensive unit back out and see what they have here. They'll bring out Kendall Patterson as the up back, and Taylor is the deep back. That Shrek in motion settles down on the left side. This is going to be Taylor. Taylor trying to pick his way in. He stood up at the goal line, wrapped up, and stopped. Who is that masked man playing with his hair on fire? That's Nate Locke, number 27. I mean, just does a great job of finding the ball, finding Taylor, and keeping him out of the end zone. Great goal line stand right there. Now second and goal. And Lakata motioning. There's some confusion as to where they're lining up, and they've got to take a timeout. Time Coach Leipold wants to take Buffalo. his first timeout here in the second half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Well, Lakata trying to get his guys in position. 9.19 left to go here, fourth quarter, 28-9 Falcons. And Buffalo knocking on the door here on a second and goal. Really, despite the score, it, it's been a lot of Buffalo here in the second it's half. Been, right. I mean, it's been mostly Buffalo here in the second half. I mean, they've moved the ball up and down the field. They just haven't been able to come away with any touchdowns. Maybe they'll change. That'll change right here. Just got to be frustrating if, if you're Buffalo, knowing that you can put points on the board, but the BG defense has been good inside that red zone. That really has been the difference here this afternoon. For red, Buffalo. Yep, at red zone defense, that's an emphasis in practice. They'll practice, you know, uh, 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 red zone defense uh, through the year. It's a big emphasis in training camp. They'll do it during the week as well. It's a it's a different package when an offense gets in the red zone. It's a different package of plays. 14th play of the drive right here. Patterson the up back. This is Taylor. Taylor again into the pile, and he's not going to get there. Knocked back again. Another, another nice job by the front four, the front seven, front eight. In this case, you got goal line defense right here for the Falcons of controlling that line of scrimmage. Guys with their hands in the dirt, playing low, letting the backers play over top. This time it's Lakata is going to spin out and throw it. He just throws it over, looking for Kendall Patterson out of the backfield. And Patterson couldn't handle the pass. And that'll bring up fourth and goal. Love the play call here. Play action on the goal line following two runs. They've got it. Just not able to make the connection right there. Ball's a little bit overthrown for Patterson. You saw Trenton Green chasing. Great play call. Just not able to execute. So that'll bring up a fourth down. And this time, Jordan Johnson. He'll get the pitch. Johnson straight ahead. Crashes in for the touchdown. Third touchdown of the year for the junior. 
And Buffalo has found the end zone for the first time here this afternoon. No go for the extra point. And just when you thought things were starting to turn, hang on, 8.42 left to go in this one. And you take a peek at the scoreboard, things are getting a little interesting. This one goes up, and it's good. 28 to 16 with 8.42 left to go. Jordan Johnson crashes in. We've got a whole new ball game here in Buffalo. Left to go as Dino Baber's defense gives up their first touchdown of the day. After a 16-play, 92-yard drive, remember, they started back after a penalty, and you thought uh, Buffalo, remember, had good field position, then it was a personal foul. They're starting back, throwing eight. Well, 92 yards and six minutes later, it's a 28-16 game. And if, if I'm not mistaken, that's the third impressive drive of this half. We look at the yardage right here, but beat Bowling Green, we've got 155. You know, versus what Bo Buffalo had, the total offense almost even. There was two drives where they ran 32 plays in the second half. They had 45 plays total in the first half. Incredible, great halftime adjustments made by the Buffalo coaching staff, Coach Leipold. But it's the red zone that's been the difference, and big stops by Bowling Green in the red zone. But hey, hang on, there's plenty of football left. The red zone's been the difference in the first half. Now here in the second half. They've get, they're on, they're on top of that. Yep, you got a, a, and a return out across the 25. Miller flag comes in on the back side. And if that's against BG, that's going to back them up. And you can talk about the momentum swing. Back Buffalo's way. If they can get some help here and they get backed up and they get a stop, look out. Well, and if you're a defensive co coordinator, you're talking Brian Borland. For Buffalo, what, what I'm thinking is is maybe a pick six or a turnover. Give your offense a short field, a quick score. Now, now it truly is anybody's football game. Well, the officials are talking this one over. Back judge threw the flag. There are two fouls in the play, both on the kicking team. Offside. Kicking team, number 30, that pe 39. That penalty will be declined. We have personal foul, illegal contact below the waist on the kicking team, number 10. 15 yard penalty from the end of the play, automatic first down. Now that'll go on Brandon Smiley, but how many special team penalties has yes. Buffalo had here tonight? Yes, right. You see Coach Leipold right there. Uh, he, keeping his cool, staying poised. You know, he's a great leader because his players look to him on how to react, but he's not going to be happy with that. That will get addressed. Yeah, he's he's not that type no, of a guy. Uh -uh. He's an internal fire type of guy. You don't become a six-time national coach of the year by losing your cool. He, he will get right. it done here the in player, Buffalo. Players respect that. They respect that. But he knows that is the quickest way to lose football games is commit stupid penalties. And they're out to the 40, and that's a quick hitch to Moore. Ronnie Moore finds the seam. Moore into Bulls territory and slung down at the 38-yard line. So here's your spread offense right here. I mean, at its best right there, taking a page. I mean, and this uh, this offense is modeled after the, what they're doing down at Baylor. You have three receivers set to left, get the ball to the perimeter, and just go. Here comes Moore again. Quick tempo by Bowling Green. Matt Johnson wants to get to the line, get his guys ready. As you see Moore come up with the football, and they're right back to the line of scrimmage. Right, and let's just get the ball to our skill, get a couple blockers out in front of him, and maybe, you know, create some space, break a couple of tackles, and score quickly. A second and five from the 33. Give it to Green, and he is bottled up and dropped. That's Brandon Crawford who wrapped him up. Crawford's had a nice football he game here. He certainly has. He certainly has. And I was just going to say that he's done a nice job of showing up in the backfield a number of times. There's Crawford right there attacking. That's what you want to be. Hey, listen, go get it. It's a simple game. You see the ball defensively, go and get it. Don't hesitate. If you sit there and you wait for those guys to block it, boy, they've got all the advantage in the world. That makes it ten times harder when you sit, wait, and catch. It's a very young Buffalo defense. A lot of sophomores, 
Couple of juniors, Crawford a junior, has a fumble return for a touchdown already this year. That's Dieter. And Dieter gonna be short. Picked up two. So that'll bring up fourth and five with seven minutes left to here in the quarter. So you see a young defense right there. You mentioned it, what's impressive right there. After Dieter catches it, man, a number of black shirts are all over them. They're rallying to the ball. They're still playing hard. They're down 12 in the fourth quarter, but they're still playing hard. And, and that's, that's things that, that a new staff brings with them and coaches their guys to do and keep playing. No matter what the circumstances are, you just keep playing. Now they're going to go for it here on fourth down. And that one is going to be blown dead. Oh, and lucky for the Bulls, it was. They get a timeout. Delay a game. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Please reset the game clock to 6.33, please. Yeah, the delay a game will back them up. And see what they're going to do here, because now it stops the clock before the clock's rolling and they're moving. 6.33 to go. They don't get this one here. The ball's sitting at the 38. If Buffalo can come up with a stop here, they're going to get the football back in some very good field position. Johnson looks over to the sideline, gets the call. They're going to empty out the backfield. Four wide receiver package for the Falcons. 28-16, big play here as they go for it on fourth and 10. Johnson fires and it's dropped. Had his man, had the first down, but Burbrink could not hold on to the football. And Buffalo will get the ball when we come back. 6.29 left to go, a big fourth down stop and a costly drop for the Falcons. 28-16 Bowling Green. In the hunt for the college football. Welcome back to UB Stadium. Much like the players, the fans have weathered the storm. And the Bulls here are going to try to reward them. It's 28 to 16 with 629 left to go. And Buffalo will start with their best starting field position of the day from the 38. How about that? With a little over, well, six and a half minutes to go in the game, this is their best field position of the day. That should say something about the kind of game that the Falcons have played in their special teams. They're going to have to pick up the tempo because both of their 16 play drives lasted almost six minutes. There's 629 on the clock. So if you want to score and get set, get something going and get the football back because they open up a little swing pass to Anthony Taylor for a good positive yardage on first down as he gets out to the 45. So he picks up seven. And you can see Licata moving that offense around. They're going to speed this up, get some tempo going, try to push the ball down the field. Fires near sideline, that's complete. Marcus McGill picks up the first down, tried to get out of bounds, but he's tackled short. Then our Turner made the tackle as McGill tried to fight his way over to the sideline to stop the clock. Good tackle by Turner. The clock will stop momentarily while they reset the chains. So like we've seen most of the day from the Falcons, they're gonna give up the underneath route but protect the deep pass. Willoughby on the far sideline for a short pickup, but again, Picked up six on first down. And Lakata's going to say, okay, you're going to give us the five, six, seven-yard route. We're going to take them all day long, work the sidelines, and control the clock. And yeah, they'll keep pushing that tempo. No substitutions for Bowling Green. This is Taylor on the left side. First down inside the 40. Oh, Anthony Taylor continues to move the chains. Bowling Green's got to find a little better attitude defensively because now at this clip, the way the Bulls are moving the ball, they will score and then they'll have a chance with an onside kick. Fired that one complete on the far sideline. And Ronnie Willoughby runs a nice little pattern to that far sideline, picks up the first down. Great execution, execution we didn't see in the first half. Again, we point to the halftime adjustments that Coach Leipold has made have been outstanding. Yeah, that was a great throw by Licata. Will it be not even out? And that one's pushed in there. That'll be first in goal. It's Will it be again. The Licata 
really moving the chains here. They're getting this one done quick. 5.20 left to go. Will it be working with Mack? He just out-muscles Mack for that football, showing some toughness downfield. Seventh play of the drive goes up in the corner for Willoughby. Then a flag came in. That's going to go against Mack. He was not playing the ball. He was playing Willoughby. Going to get him for face guarding. That's going to be a touchdown for the Bulls. Willoughby made a great catch in the corner. Pass interference. Defense. Number 26. Penalties declined. Result from play. Touchdown. Take a look at this catch right. here. Just a timing pattern to the outside again. You see Mack not at all playing the the, the, uh, the quarterback with the ball. His eyes aren't turned around. He's just face guarding the receiver, and he draws the penalty. So seven plays. They go 62 yards in a minute, 16 seconds. So we that? talked about having to do it fast. Yeah. And Ronnie Willoughby was a great high school basketball player and you can see he used his hops on that play there he's a big target at six foot four 210. We'll start take a look at what offense. he's done number 74. his junior Five year penalty 50 Replay catches last year after a sophomore season he caught the ball three times and then look what he does his junior year 50 catches and already here 31 catches his senior year in his fifth week of the season. And that kind of improvement is what NFL scouts look for. They say, hey, listen, maybe this kid, and we've seen it time and time again with guys coming out of the MAC, and the MAC is emerging as really as a, a, a grounds for NFL recruits. You see a number of them, but they look for that kind of improvement, saying, hey, listen, with the right development, we could make him into maybe the next uh, Julian Edelman. And just like that, 28-22, and what a game changer it has been. So Joe Licata, with that touchdown pass, ties him with Tyler Tettleton for 15th all-time in the MAC. 66 touchdown uh, tosses, already the Buffalo career touchdown leader. And that just moved him into some elite company as he moves up into 15th place along with the former Bobcat, Tyler Tettleton. He's already third in career passing yards here at UB. Has the touchdown passing record. And last year, he'll even admit, not a great game for him against BG, but he's come out here as Buffalo has now entered the 500-yard. How about that? How about that? And, uh, you know, this is a completely different team than it was in the first half. And I'm Bowling Green, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous, one, about not getting this onside kick because that last performance or the whole performance in the second half by the Bulls has been outstanding, and chances are they will score with the Bull. Now, we talked about this, these two teams getting together, and it always, these are close games. Yes. Last year was a one-point game. We've got a six-point game right here, and let's face it, Bowling Green's been flat here in the second half. Buffalo made the adjustments at halftime, and they've come out and taken it to them. Going to be a short kick, fielded at the 20, and returned out across the 35, but there's a flag down on the play. Brandon Harris returned the kick for Bowling Green. Now that's going to be a holding call on the Falcons. That's going to back them up. And we'll see what they want to do. During the return, holding, receiving team. Number 26, 10-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, the Bulls faithful that have stuck around for this one. They've been rewarded. This has turned into oh, a pretty yeah. good football game oh, in the second oh. half. <laughs> they, they, they'll be all on their feet in a, in a <laughs> moment here. And I'm sitting here talking about onside kick. There's no need for an onside kick. I forgot it with how fast they scored with the ball the last time they had it. Hardly ran any time off the clock. I thought maybe looking at that, that they would run that clock down to maybe three or two minutes. But there's plenty of time left in this game with just over five minutes. That's Travis Green, Green over the left side. You know, you talk about having to run the football, but when you have a spread offense like Bowling Green, the way they move the football, it's almost like they're running with it. They're short well, design passes, they swing, they do a bunch of different and, things. And that's a little bit of the knock on the spread offense. I don't know if I buy into it, but it, it, it can be. How do you finish a game when you need to run the ball down the field right. All right, and, and, and just load it up and take time off the clock and ground and pound 
right there. Can you do it? I mean, look at this formation. That doesn't tell me that you're going <laughs> to grind and, and pound your way down the field. <laughs> they faked the Travis Green. Stepped off, missed one. That's Ronnie Moore. Moore up the right sideline. Moore out of bounds and picks up the first down. And there's a flag down back at the 34. Could be in the area of holding where that bunch set was. Let's see what the call is. Holding. holding. Offense, number one. Ten-yard penalty, second down. Well, they get Roger Lewis. It was that bunch package up top. And Lewis gets called for the hold. Costly penalty because not only does it take away a big play right there to the outside, but it also negates that first down run that put him in second and four. See Coach Babers, he too keeps his poise. His team is looking to him for leadership. That's, that's very important. He recognizes that, hey, listen, you know, we're, we're, we're professionals here. We've got to stay balanced. We've got to stay calm. Do your job. Oh, four minutes and counting here. Winding down to four minutes left. Sitting at a second and 11 from the 24. This time they're going to hand it to Green. Green straight ahead, and he nearly picked up the first down, about a yard short. Out at the 34. Well, the clock will continue to move. And a third down and one for Bowling Green. Outstanding job on that second down with the run. Looked like they went with the counter tray. Just ran the ball up the middle with Green. He powers ahead, making a lie out, liar out of me <laughs> as far as finishing this game with the run. And for their sake, I'm glad they are. Yeah, Travis Green, they brought back in here. They didn't see much of him at the tail end of the first quarter. Matt Johnson was running that offense with big plays. And now they'll take a timeout. Want to talk this one over. Third and one from the 34. And a 28-22 lead for Bowling First Green. First team timeout, Bowling Green. This will be a 30-second timeout. So a short timeout to talk this one over because it is a big third down with the momentum that Buffalo has put together yeah. here in the second half. You want to get this one right. You had three minutes and 50, 16 seconds to go into the game. You get this one right, now two things are going to happen. You're going to make Buffalo burn a lot of timeouts or you're going to burn a lot of time off that clock so this is a huge third down for them and it's even tough to guess what a bowling green team would do because of the way that they spread you out and, and run the football though just the different formations that coach babers puts together you just have no idea i really don't it's not one of those teams we can say they're going to run the football they're going to pound it at them but I guess you can no. tell by the formation when they come out because I can see well, Donovan Wilson coming out, <laughs> yeah. the big fullback yeah. right now. So <laughs> that already told me it looks like a jumbo package. Right, right. right. I don't see any single, not a <laughs> no. single digits out there as far as numbers. You come out with the, the jumbo and then you hand the football off. That's going to be Wilson, and Wilson's going to push ahead for the first down. You saw they brought out Derek Lee, the tight end, put Wilson him in the, the backfield. Carry. So here comes all the single digit right there. There's the power. That's the power coming around with the offensive lineman. It's just a great push. That's a nice job of coming up by Lewis there, supporting the corner, but it's just too little too late. The damage was already done by that left side of the offensive line and allowing Green to get up in there and pick up the first. Yeah, we talked about the formation. You saw J.J. Began, the 6'3", 290-pound redshirt uh, right guard back there along with Derek Lee at 258 your tight end and then they give it to the 230 pound fullback for the first down and so I take it back you can't be surprised there's power <laughs> football at its best right there so, well they've got it in their package it's probably just not practiced a ton you know they've got multiple packages you see the spread you see you know the empty set you have different personnel groupings now they'll come down three minutes 11 seconds left to go Bowling Green with the lead, the football and a first down at their 36. Travis Green back in there. Behind Derek Lee, the tight end. And this is going to be Johnson on the keeper, and he is swallowed up. Damon Harris wrapped him up after he got back to the line of scrimmage, and Buffalo is going to take another timeout. You see Johnson right there taking Third and final timeout, Buffalo. 30-second timeout. Taking a big hit off this quarterback run. Take a look at it. Just kind of just option football right there. He takes a big hit. Now he avoids, I should say, he avoids the big hit right there. He gets down low, take, 
take a look at it again. Watch him slide right there. <laughs> and those two guys, they bump heads together. If he doesn't slide, then he takes the brunt of that. Maybe he suffers a concussion. You don't know. But they spent a ton of time with him, Coach Barbar did, in, in teaching him how to avoid that, that hit and, and, and to protect yourself. And they showed him pictures or they showed him film of NFL quarterbacks and how they do it, slide, how to protect themselves because he's valuable. He's, he's much better on the field for the Falcons, uh, obviously, than off the field. Yeah, and the one thing that has changed in Matt Johnson's career, he's a he really, really a good game manager. And the coaches tell me it all starts as he's a good practicer. He knows how to practice, and that's real important at the college level, really at, at any level. If you have a good week of practice to prepare yourself, you're going to come in ready to play. Right, because it really doesn't change, Mike. Uh, you know, when you go out to the practice, the pace of the game. Number 91 for Buffalo was injured on the previous play. By rule, he must sit out one down. Well, Devon Harris, who made the tackle, is now being escorted to the sideline. Yeah, I think Coach Leipold's saying, I called a timeout. He should be able to stay in the game. Did Crawford, I know Crawford was in on the play. Did he get right there? Yeah, he got hit by his own man. He took the brunt of the hit. Right. Brandon Crawford came in almost helmet to the chin. So he's a little dazed. He stays down and yep. right there. Good job, guys. Travis Green to the outside. Travis Green, one man to beat. Cuts back inside. Big gain, stays in bounds. And a good run by Travis Green, but a smart run by Travis Green. And staying in bounds downfield. He understands the game. He understands what they're trying to accomplish here with less than three minutes to go. Now Brandon Crawford's down for the Bulls. I saw him coming down late. And take another look at this run. Take a look at a nice change of direction there. Vision, his eyes are up. Look at that. Cut right to the outside. Makes a defender miss. And here downfield, he stays in bounds and then gets, that, gets underneath the tacklers to protect himself. Take another look at this. Look at that. Cutting in the backfield right there. Change of direction in the backfield and then downfield. Do a little Walter Payton as he as he moves down the field. Ooh. I was trying to see where Crawford was. He was caught up in the middle of the field. I don't know if he got run into by one of his own guys in the pursuit. Well, Crawford is probably still, I mean, he and Harris on the last play. I mean, they That's went true. head to head. He's probably still suffering a little bit from that last play. The, the officials just didn't recognize it on him, and here it catches up with him. Yeah, and they're taking a long time down there with him on the field. You see him surrounded by the training staff, and now Coach Leipold's coming out to check on Crawford, who's had a phenomenal football game here this afternoon yeah. for the Bulls. He's been everywhere. The good thing is he's sitting up, and I think they're working on his leg. I mean, if that's a good thing. They saw him limping a little bit. But you made a good point, the collision that he had with Harris, and that's a great sign. Did he get up and walk off on his own power? We talked about how young this Bulls defense is, and he's certainly one of the keys defensively. Already with a fumble return for a score this year. But this is a real young defense that Coach Leipold has. And has the potential to be a very, very good defense. Because Buffalo has been one of the best defensive teams in the MAC for a long time. You get that reputation. But eventually, things start to turn over a little bit. And some of the younger guys have to step up and make plays. And then eventually become the older guys. And that's kind of where he is right now. His offense is a little bit ahead of his defense. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. You know, for a long time they were led by their all-American linebacker Khalil Mack, who's now making a big impact in the NFL with the Oakland Raiders. But players, young players, high school players, they see that. They're attracted to that. They, they come on board. And it's a, it's a culture that they, you know, Coach Leipold wants to continue on. And certainly defensive coordinator Borland recognizes that as well. Now the clock is winding down here inside three minutes to go after Crawford gets off on his own power so it'll be first down from the Buffalo 35 with two and a half years Johnson goes to work with Travis Green in the backfield three wide receivers up top that's going to be Green Green another big run as he cuts to the outside he picks up eight Barry on the tackle for Buffalo 
So this is the beauty of the spread right here, the Baylor-style offenses. You've got really two offenses out there on the field. You've got your pass set, your receivers to the right, and then you've right, you got your run game in the middle. And it's really up to Matt Johnson to decide what we want to do. Right there, he makes the decision, hey, we've got the numbers in the run game. Let's give it to our guy, Green, and, it, and, it, and it's successful for a nice pickup on first down, a gain of eight yards. So he's really looking at that all. He's looking at that. Now he's under center, a little bit different here. But he's looking at defense and saying, hey, let's take what they give us. And using up that play clock as Green moves straight ahead, and he picks up the first down. That's a great job, Johnson. And that's just a veteran quarterback right there. You got the senior taking a look at the play clock. Right. Burning every bit of this game clock that they can before getting to Travis Green. We thought we'd see a lot of offense and almost a thousand yards into this game. And it is done. It has been yeah. maybe not the highest score that we thought, but the conditions here kind of warranted some of the, the way things changed up. It has not been a pleasant day to play football, but we've had plenty of big plays to talk about here this afternoon. Coming up on a minute left. Gonna be green again. Gilbo on the tackle. Green was the workhorse in the first half for the Falcons, and now you see him in with that offense finishing this game in the fourth quarter. Congratulations all around for everybody because they know this was a hard-fought game on the road against a rival. Over 1,000 yards of offense in this game, 1,037 yards going into the victory formation here. And Bowling Green will extend their winning streak against Buffalo. They've now won five in a row. And this is the sixth time in seven meetings here in Buffalo that they've won. So Bowling Green has come in on six and one here on the road at UB Stadium. So a big win for the Falcons. They move to three and two, and the Bulls will fall to, to two and three in this opener. In the, Final score. And the Falcons continue to stay undefeated in the Mac East. Very impressive. Last two years, haven't lost a Mac East I haven't lost to a Mac East opponent, and here they continue that on in 2015. Yeah, they have they have been lights out, and Coach Babers has a lot to do with that. And I know they're happy to come in and get this one because even though these two schools may be far apart, these two schools really consider themselves big rivals because of what's at stake when these two guys meet. These are the powers of the East, and when they come to call them like they did here this afternoon, they know the winner of this one has a big leg up and then a chance to, to move towards that MAC championship. But everything is well, advertised today, yeah, right, partner? Absolutely. You know, I, I thought the difference was with the Falcons, they really played well in the first half, and they were able to score touchdowns. The Bulls offensively played well in the second half, and they were able to score a little bit, but touchdowns, field goals, that was the difference. Well, that'll do it for us here this afternoon. For my partner here in the booth, Frank Stams, for Ben Wagner down on the field, our entire MAC football staff bringing you the first week of the MAC season. Hope you enjoyed this one from UB Stadium, our final score, Bowling Green 28. Buffalo 22, that's how it opens up in the first week of MAC football. Hope you enjoyed it from everybody here in Buffalo. Good night.